guests that are part of the meeting. But let me start by generally welcoming them before we know who is there and uh, welcome um, to the three bodies that would be before us. Um, and uh, I would like to first, before I dwell on the, just to say, let's, let's, let's uh, introduce ourselves. I'm a new chairperson. I'm informed that you met with the committee uh, three times. So this is the first time that I'm here. I'm Fiki Lekasa, chairperson of this uh, portfolio committee for cooperative governance and traditional affairs. I hope you know the other members, but uh, if it happens that you don't know them, uh, I will uh, allow that opportunity for whichever member that might think is new, you might not know. But uh, in doing so, I would uh, suggest that let's allow the heads of the different delegations uh, to introduce their uh, members. I know you because you are all heads of uh, important institutions in our government, uh, but we have never met uh, formally as we are going to do. I see uh, Advocate uh, Padoi in front of me. Maybe let's start with you to say, if you can, just help us to get a sense of your delegation to the committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Um, my delegation today, just before I introduce my delegation chair, our recollection is that we've, uh, as the NPA, have only appeared once before this committee yeah. in 2019, December. It may have been my counterparts or partners that have appeared more times than us. But my delegation today, uh, chair, I'm, I'm joined by um, advocate Rodney de Kock, who is the deputy national director and the head of the National Prosecution Service um, also by Advocate Rabaji Rasitaba, who is um, the head of the Asset Forfeiture Unit in the NPA. Um, also by Advocate Anton Duplessis, who is the head of our Strategy Operations and Compliance. Um, all of them are Deputy National Directors of Public Prosecutions, and they are joined by one or two members of their respective teams. Um, that is the delegation from the NPA, um, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can we allow Advocate Motibi um, from the SIU? No, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Chair and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, we would like to extend our word of thank you for inviting us to come and present. And let me also greet my colleagues, NDPP and the head of the Hawks and all the colleagues in the meeting. Uh, I'm joined today, Honorable uh, Chair, by uh, uh, Dr. Wells. Uh, he is the Chief Legal Counsel. He'll be covering the civil litigation that emanated from all these investigations. Uh, he's also joined by uh, Advocate Fisati, they are all from the civil litigation unit, uh, so they'll cover the, the civil litigation part. And then I'm also joined by uh, Mr. Lecheto, he's the Chief National Investigating Officer. He'll be covering the better part of the presentation, which focuses on the investigations that were conducted. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Mr. Maharaj, he's the Chief program portfolio officer. He is, amongst others, responsible just for ensuring that the proclamations are processed on time, allegations are, sus are assessed on time. Uh, and of course, following up on the outcomes of our investigations. And then I'm joined also by Mr. Khanyako. Uh, he is the head of stakeholder relations 
communications and is also the spokesperson of uh, SIU. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Um, lastly, can we ask uh, Lieutenant General Libeya uh, from uh, over to you? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Also, let me extend the greetings to my colleagues, uh, Advocate Mutibi, the head of uh, the SIU, as well as uh, Advocate Batoy, the National Director of Public Prosecution and the team. Uh, from the DPCI myself, uh, Lieutenant General Nebea, I am joined by the 18th Divisional Commissioner, uh, Major General Musibi. He has been kicked out uh, just uh, now uh, through the system, but uh, he will be rejoining. Uh, he is uh, trying to reconnect. Uh, also, I am joined by uh, Major General Moodley. He is uh, the head of the component serious corruption investigation at national office. And uh, we are also joined by the Brigadier Matruos. Brigadier Matruos is the section head of the governance uh, fraud investigation uh, within the serious commercial crime uh, investigation component. So that particular component uh, section has been in the past before the finalization of the structure called the National Clean Audit Task Team, which has been doing uh, several investigation on the municipalities. I would also like to uh, apologize in advance, Chairperson, that uh, there will be some noise uh, whenever I speak because of uh, the venue where we are. I am in the field in uh, Umlazi but uh, I hope that uh, it will not uh, disturb the communication and the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and members. Thank you very much. Uh, let me again formally welcome uh, you, uh, the leaders, as well as the teams. Uh, on behalf of the committee, as you might be aware, this comes out of a session I think it was following this forensic investigation report on the 3rd of March, 2020. That's when we started uh, on this program. And uh, I'm informed that there was a resolution then that said, because of some of the serious challenges in local government and the delays in some of the cases that we see before us and the impact of them, uh, on service delivery uh, because we are public representatives by implication when we say we do oversight we are equally uh, speaking on behalf of the people of South Africa so there is something that is being noted especially at the local government level that the impact of corruption specifically on service delivery is quite serious and unfortunately we were not really seriously involved as part of the commission that has just finished that is presenting reports so because of that then there was a resolution to say quarterly would want to engage with yourselves so that we can be part of monitoring, monitoring progress and see what are the challenges and if there's any contribution we can make, because in the end, we want to see delivery of services to our communities. And unfortunately, some of these activities are happening amongst them. So that is why we would like to welcome you uh, Without wasting much time, uh, honorable members, on your behalf, uh, the agenda, I'm coming back to you. Maybe let me allow yourselves as well, uh, honorable members, if there are any apologies for fellow committee secretary. 
Good morning, everybody. Yes, Chairperson, there is an apology from Honorable Prince. He won't be able to join the meeting today. There's also apologies from the Minister. She's attending a South African Investment Conference. DM Mapela and both DGs are attending the launch of the, Kois, the Commission on Koisan Matters today. And Mr. Sigaba from the department will be leading the delegation from the. Go. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Is my is is Honourable Kaba here? My yes. apology, my apology, Chair, is the network that I I don't have network here. I would be just to kick and and in kick out kick come in kick out come in. I'm just apologizing for that because I know. That is my illness that I have where I am in Mitrel. Thank you. Okay. Any other member? Um, and then be, beyond that, then we have an agenda which I think is quite clear, and uh, it would be presentations. Uh, it will start with uh, DPCI, followed by NPA then SIU will only discuss after the presentations. And uh, so I, I assume, can I get any member to agree that this is how we are going to um, uh, 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 continue with the meeting? Any proposal for adoption? Yeah, I see Honorable Grunewald. Chairperson, I will propose that we proceed that way, but I just want to check if we are a quorum in this meeting so that we can move forward, but then I'll propose that we move forward like that. Okay, uh, that that would be good. Uh, a reminder, uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary, do we form a quorum? Yes, Chairperson. We okay. Then proposed uh, adoption of the program. Yes. Sorry, Chair, I have my hand up. You may not have noticed. Oh, uh, very okay. quick. Um, may I propose that because of the way in which the work, work flows, that perhaps the SIU presents the DPCI and then the NPA. It's just a proposal in terms of the workflow. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I hope members don't have any uh, objection to that. Um, I'll second, Chairperson. You support that, yes. Uh, any member who must support the uh, Honorable Grunewald? Yes, it's Taba here, Chair. I'm supporting. Okay. Supporting. Uh, has just been proposed uh, and uh, supported. I think let's follow that order. What was the proposal? Is the SIU that must come first? Yes. Okay. Uh, over to you, um, SIU. Uh, now, good morning once more, uh, Honorable Chair. Yes. Uh, we are we are ready, uh, despite the changes of the order. Uh, we're ready to present. Uh, as I as I indicated. Uh, that uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Cheto and, and Dr. Wells, and probably Advocate Fisahi, they'll cover uh, some of the areas in the presentation. Uh, Honorable Chair, as, as you indicated, uh, we've presented to the committee before, uh, and some of the information would probably be uh, almost a repeat, but uh, if you allow us, uh, we can go through it or really just uh, uh, will be guided by your, your yourself chair. Uh, we have included uh, all, the, all the investigations that were done in the local government space to date. Uh, and some of them uh, really date back to uh, almost 2002 uh, and what has become uh, the presidential reports have been submitted. Uh, the outcomes are noted. 
And uh, we, of course, uh, continue just to follow up on those outcomes. And perhaps I must go uh, onto the slides that deal with the outcomes that we reach as SIU. Uh, I'll not cover uh, the mandate uh, which the Honorable Committee would be familiar with. So Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, when SIU investigates following the allegations that we receive and we process through uh, the proclamations to be signed and we investigate formally, these are the main uh, some of the main outcomes that we reach. And these outcomes, as you can see, uh, the part of the heading says consequence management. These are the outcomes that ensures that whenever there is a finding of wrongdoing, there are consequence management. And uh, we are saying this consequence management has to be meted out wherever it is in all of these boxes. Firstly, the civil litigation part, because uh, mostly, in fact, almost 90, 95% of these investigations that we do are procurement based, uh, where procurement processes have not been followed. There's here and there where we find uh, the other nature of irregularities uh, relating to uh, employment irregularities uh, in the in the human capital, human resources space, and and some of the other irregularities. But the major the major part of our investigations is around you know failure uh, in the procurement space, and understandably because really that's where the money is, and uh, the corrupt and those who would like to abuse state funds they focus. On the, on the procurement part. Now, when we do an investigation in that procurement part, we find that the procurement process was irregular and the contracts that followed after that, it's irregular. What we do, we then go to, uh, to the courts. Uh, lately, since 2019, uh, the president proclaimed the special tribunal, that's where we now litigate at, and it really proved that it speedily is producing the results and it's giving us the results that we need. We cancel the contract, we recover the monies in that, in that box of civil litigation. Now, amongst others, um, uh, there are other uh, restraint orders that we get in that process, but the, the next box on uh, second from the left, uh, which refers to disciplinary actions. So if we find that there's officials that are involved in the irregularities, we then refer the evidence pack to the uh, accounting authority, accounting officers. And in the, in, in the scheme of, uh, in, in the context of the governance in the municipalities, the accounting officer would be the municipal manager but where the municipal manager is involved, we would then refer it to the executive authority and so on. And we expect that they should implement uh, these referrals and where there is a failure to implement, we would like to understand why. Just in the interest of ensuring that there's consequence management. Right, and then the third block on the, from the left is that by law, when we, find that there's evidence that points to the commission of an offense, the law requires us to refer that to NPA. Uh, the last box, uh, which refers to other regulatory authorities, in our investigation, uh, we find that uh, there are other uh, infractions, like uh, failure to comply with the Income Tax Act, or other uh, competition commission uh, irregularities or other professional irregularities where professionals are involved, like lawyers, uh, engineers, and so on. So then we refer those to the regulatory authorities, and we again similarly follow up with them to make sure that they implement. Uh, and at the bottom there, Honorable Chair, 
is that uh, as part of our as part of our investigations, uh, we ensure that while we point out the wrongdoing, we also point out systemic failures, uh, failures in the system, where we would then go back to the to the accounting officers. where we recommend the improvement in the system. It could be from risk management, from the planning process, systems, people, and so on. Because the nature of the work that we do is that it points out all of this uh, systemic failures and systemic uh, inefficiencies, and we would like to then uh, contribute in the improvement of the administration of the state. Uh, I thought I would spend some time here because most of what the honorable members will hear going forward in all the presentations, we will be pointing out uh, the outcomes uh, as depicted uh, in this slide. Uh, and, and of course, indicating the status, whether they've been implemented or not. Uh, 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 in particular, uh, the disciplinary processes, of course, we will uh, the, uh, the, our colleagues from uh, NPA will indicate the status of the matters that have been referred. Uh, uh, so, so the systemic recommendations, we engage with the municipalities. We have engaged with various of them, uh, the latest of which was the municipality in Mahikeng, where everybody came together to interrogate the systemic failures, and we come out with a implementation plan to make sure that the system improves. Uh, and that again helps us with the prevention of ensuring that this uh, wrongdoing or whatever failures do not happen again. Honorable Chair, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, proceed on and ask uh, Mr. Khatu, can you page on please? I think this is the the, the strategic focus areas, Honorable Chair, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, we're really just indicating to the Honorable Committee that uh, as we started doing our work and implementing the new strategy, the most important part was that we need to make an impact of the work of the SIU. And to make that impact, we identified all of the strategic focus areas that if we look at this amongst others or in the main, we should see changes in the way SIU does its work. We started with all this around 2018 or so, and we are seeing the results now. Uh, the up at the top there is a very important one, improved turnaround times of investigations, uh, because we understand that accounting officers, when they refer matters to us, they want them dealt with speedily and, and produce the results and ensure that number two, uh, monitor the implementation of the referrals and consequence management. And I'll just do deal with number C, which indicates that uh, we needed to accelerate the civil litigation. And that is why there was a process to establish the special tribunal. So we've seen uh, improvements. Uh, and, and, and as we now investigate, is in the background of all of this focus area. Mr. Lecher to the next slides, please. Next slides. Yes, um, at this stage, Honorable Chair, given all what I've said, is that uh, we will now present to the Honorable Committee, uh, as I indicated, uh, these are the, this is the section that will deal with the uh, final reports that have been submitted. Uh, after, after the section on final reports, we will deal with ongoing investigations, deal with the civil litigation, and the lastly, we will conclude uh, with uh, some of the anti-corruption measures that have been implemented. With your permission, Honorable Chair, I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Lecherto, over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Advocate, and greetings to the Honorable Chair and Honorable Members and heads of different state institutions and my colleagues. I will be doing the presentation on the investigation and like advocate indicated it's 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 broken down into finalized matters where the report has been submitted to the president and thereafter i'm going to touch on the ongoing investigation honorable chair in terms of the matters that are finalized 
where report is submitted. These are the methods that we have presented to the committee before, and they run from slide, uh, they run from slide number 11 until slide number 18. So these are the methods where there is no changes. We have submitted the report to the president. So as advocate indicated that we, we will able to skip some of those matters. Then we will deal with matters where there's a new information that came. Slide from uh, number 33, that's where we have uh, reported, where we have now submitted report to the president. As you can see, number 33, the first municipality there is Umgungundro of a municipality of which we were investigating procurement irregularity leading to appointment of service provider in respect of events and project management service. On this one, we submitted reports to the president on the 28th of October, 2021. And the outcome of this investigation is that we have seven recommendations for disciplinary action and four criminal referrals to NPA, one recovery for overpayments made uh, to the service provider obtained in a form of acknowledgement of debt for the value of 53,000, uh, one cash payment of 1.9 million paid to the municipality by a service provider for overpayment. The next one is the Dr. Nkosana Dlamini Zuma municipality, where we are looking at provision of water by water tankers to the municipality. Here, the report was submitted on the 10th of December, 2021. Investigation is finalized and we did not find any irregularity in the investigation. And the other one is Kwadukuza local municipality, whereby the investigation emanates from complaint received from whistleblower involved in the Kwadukuza municipality. The allegation was that municipality incurred irregular expenditure, followed an irregular process, procurement process in the appointment of service provider and service provider inflated the price in the contract to the municipality. Here, the report also submitted on the 10th of December, 2021. 10 referrals were submitted to the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority for nine registration of supplier for medical device and equipment. As you know that anybody that supply medical equipment, they are required to register with SAPRA. So on this instance, we discovered that, we discovered that the, the service provider that, supp that supply this device to the municipality were not registered with SAPRA. Next one is Umgeni local municipality, where the allegation was the possible irregular use of municipal infrastructure grant funds, the irregular use of delegation of the municipality, uh, by CFO and SCM in approving the payment and the irregular appointment of service provider, the exorbitant cost of the services rendered in the technical service business unit and PPE price may have been inflated. Report also submitted on the 10th of December, 2021. We have made two recommendations for disciplinary action against the municipal manager and the municipal manager has been suspended and we have made one criminal referrals against the municipal manager, which was submitted to the NPA, and one referral to SARS against the service provider for possible tax irregularities. And we have also made one referral to the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority for nine registration to supply medical device equipment. The 37 one is the Umdoni local municipality where we look at procurement irregularity by municipality in the appointment of service provider, and also looking at inflated price by service provider. Report submitted. Outcome is that we have made one criminal referral, or one criminal referral has been prepared for submission to NPA, and we have made one referral to SARS for possible tax irregularities. Number 38, we looked at the Etequini municipality, where a complaint from whistleblower, which led to investigation of the procurement of PPE, catering and shelter for the homeless by Etequini. The allegation was that Etequini awarded the contract to various service provider without complying with national treasury benchmark rate, resulting in Etequini paying more than the national treasury rate. Report submitted. 
and we have made the following outcome. Six recommendation for disciplinary action against official, nine criminal referrals uh, submitted to the National Prosecuting Authority, five referrals to SARS for possible tax irregularities by service provider, 24 referrals to the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority for nine registration to supply medical device and equipment, and we've made seven acknowledgement of debt signed by a service provider to the value of 337,000. Uh, this acknowledgement is where, we, where the service provider comes out and indicate that I do acknowledge that I've been overpaid or I've charged more than they signed to an acknowledgement that they will pay the money that they're being overly paid. Then 39 is Amasati local municipality where a report has been submitted in, on the 18th of August, 2017. And here the outcome is that we have, we have two arrests on the Staterham case, uh, 24-08, uh, 2017. Was a, a criminal case was provisionally withdrawn on the 10th of uh, December, 2021, in order to consolidate other matters of a similar nature the case to be enrolled at the later stage when investigation are completed. And we have also done civil litigation at the Grahamstown High Court well, on case number 2855 stroke 2017, trial to took, trial to took place, trial to take place on the 8th to the 12th of uh, November 2021, and a return date is being awaited. So on this one, we will get an update when the civil litigation give us an update. And number 40 is Alfred Nzo municipality, where we look at the procurement of or contracting for six trucks, six sprinkler water tanker, and three jet vacuum tanker by or on behalf of the district municipality and payment in respect thereof and any related unauthorized or irregular or fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred by the district municipality or any improper or unlawful conduct by the councillor, official, or an employee of the district municipality, and also including the service provider. Here, reported was submitted on the 31st of March, 2020. We have done the following outcome, eight criminal referrals to the NPA, and the investigation is ongoing and NPA, NPA decision is pending. And we have also one, made one recommendation for disciplinary action against the former acting municipal manager of Alfred Nzo municipality. And the former acting municipal manager resigned on the 26th of uh, February, 2019. Several proceeding has been treated by the SIU to the value of 60.7 million. And special tribunal case is the EC02-20. Notice to defend has been issued and the update will be provided and potential cash on assets to be recovered because of non-payment or declaration of VET value is to the amount of 9.9 .9, and we are waiting feedback from SARS in order to know what is it that they've done. And number 41 is the Raymond Mutlaba municipality. Here we look at the procurement of or contracting for motor vehicle uh, by or on behalf of the local municipality in terms of a high purchase agreement dated 7 February 2014 and payments made in respect thereof related to unauthorized or irregular, irregular or fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred by the local municipality. And we also look at the improper con conduct by councillor, official and service providers. Here we submitted the report on the 31st of March and the outcome of the investigation is that we have done five criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authority. An investigation is ongoing and NPA decision is pending. Several proceeding has been instituted by the SIU to the value of 22.3 million. Uh, that's the case, the EC01-20 and notice to defend has been issued. And there's potential cash and or asset to be recovered because of the non-payment or declaration of that value to the value of 5.8 million, we are waiting for the feedback from SARS with regard to this recovery. 
Number 42 is Mpache, local municipality in the Eastern Cape. Here we look at the incorrect application of section 2032 of the Municipal Finance Management Act in respect of the contracting for procurement of yellow fleet plant equipment and vehicle by or on behalf of the municipality in terms of high purchase agreement dated for March 2015 and 6 July 2015 respectively. And we're also looking at fraud by the supplier by misrepresenting by to the municipality that Kwani Capital was the rightful owner of the equipment. And we also look at the misrepresentation by the official at vehicle testing center who fraudulently captured information on the e nature system that they inspected the equipment and indicated that such equipment was roadworthy. Report has been submitted on the 28th of September, 2020. And the outcome of the investigation is that we have done a uh, six uh, recommendation for disciplinary action. Sanction implemented include freezing of salary increment, final written warning, suspension without pay, uh, payments of a fine and a forfeiture, forfeiting benefit, which were suspended for a period of six months. Those are the, the response that we have received from the municipality regarding the implementation of the, the disciplinary. And we have also made eight criminal referrals, case docket registered and under investigation by the Directorate of Priority uh, Crime Investigation. Civil litigation on the 1st of June, 2020, the SIU instituted proceeding against three defendants in the special tribunal. SARS referrals, we have made one, referrals to SARS relating to possible non-declaration or non-payment of debt. Number 43 is Mbashe local, oh, it's still continuing Mbashe local municipality where we have indicate, we are indicating that matter has been fed to the special tribunal. And number 44 is the, it's the Eastern Cape Development Corporation Department and Department of Provincial Planning and Treasury of the Eastern Cape, the Eastern Cape Department of Safety and Liaison, Eastern Cape uh, Parks Board, Tourism, Buffalo City Municipality, Metro, Metropolitan Municipality, King Sabata Local Municipality, OR Tambo Municipality, and Nelson Mandela Bay Munis uh, Metropolitan Municipality. Here, numerous complaints were lodged with the Office of the Public Protector during the period 14 January 2014 to 24 June 2014, uh, pertaining to the expenditure in cure in respect of the funeral of the late former President Mandela. The public protector conducted the investigation and the finding were reflected in a report titled Report on an Investigation into Allegation of the Misappropriation of fund, Public Funds in Proper Conduct and Maladministration in Connection with the Expenditure in cure in the preparation for the funeral of former president uh, Nelson Holichata Mandela. In terms of the report, public protector as the remedial action recommended that matter be referred to the SIU to take the necessary steps in instituting civil proceedings to recover the loss in cure by the organ of state as a result of procurement of goods and or services for the funeral of the president Mandela. On 5 December 2013, President Nelson Mandela passed away. I think it's just an indication. But if we go to the outcome of the investigation, we have made four NPA referrals where we made referrals to for the former HOD for 22 million. And we also made a referral to the former city manager for Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality for the value of 1.2 million. And we also made a uh, referrals for the former MM of OR Tambo Municipality for 442,000. And we also made referrals for Rea Hola for 4.9 million. And in terms of Alfred Nzo District Municipality, we look at the procurement and contracting for goods, work or services by on behalf of the municipality and payments made in respect thereof and any unrelated, unauthorized, irregular or fruitless and wasteful expenditure 
in Cuba and the municipality in respect of the following, the supply, delivery, installation, or commissioning of water storage facility or tanker or contract number that is reflected, the Matitiele Watt 7 water supply project and the revenue and billing management solution. And we also look at maladministration and affair of the municipality in any losses or prejudice suffered by the municipality. And the outcome of the investigation is that we have made two NPA referrals and we have made two disciplinary referrals of which it's indicated there. And we have made four SARS referrals and we've made two referrals for, for CIDB where the service provider have uh, fraudulently obtained their grading uh, uh, certificate. Number 46 relates to Nelson Mandate Metropolitan Municipality where we look at the procurement of or contracting for goods and work and services, including the construction, refurbishment, leasing, occupation, and use of immovable property during or in respect of the national state of disaster. Here, the report has been submitted and the outcome of the investigation is that we have referred four disciplinary referrals and four NPA referrals with regard to the acting city manager executive director, uh, senior manager, and senior manager, and also another three senior managers. And here we have also instituted one civil litigation to the value of 24 million. And a progress will be outlined later regarding the civil litigation. 47, we look at the provincial, uh, we look at the following municipality, uh, Seron local municipality, Whiskers District Municipality, Kalitso, Kalitz Drorp Municipality, Worcester Municipality, Robertson Municipality. And here we're looking at the failure by the management board of the council to keep and maintain proper financial record and pay VET to SARS and unlawful awarding of tenders, irregular tendering by member of the management board of council to building the Sharon Holiday Resort, failure of council to recover due debt in respect of loan made by the council to Sharon uh, Budari and irregular loan granted by the council to members of the council, and also failure of the municipality to recover due debt account for rebate and subsidy paid in relation to a housing project, failure of the municipality to recover due debt rates and taxes income uh, imposed fine for damaged prepaid electricity meter. Here, the investigation is closed and there were no outcomes out of the investigation. The 48 one is George local municipality where we look at the loss suffered by the municipality as a result of unlawful con conduct or irregular practices by the municipality's personnel or person or entity doing business with the municipality in relation to payments made to or disposal of municipal land to George Housing Agency. Uh, here the report has been submitted on the 30th of April 2013 and we've made one criminal reference to the National Prosecuting Authority and there is the George case number 113 stroke 06 uh, stroke 2012 and and matter is being considered whether to prosecute or not. Number 49 is Stellenbosch local municipality, where we also look at the procurement of good work or services by or on behalf of the municipality and related expenditure incurred by the municipality in a manner that was not fair, competitive, transparent, equitable, uh, equitable and cost effective. The report has been submitted on the 30th of April, 2013, here we've made three criminal referrals to the NPA, where there's a Stellenbosch case, case uh, 451 stroke 02 stroke 2021. And we also have Stellenbosch case, case uh, 707 stroke 5 stroke 2011. And we also have a Belleville case 281 stroke 12 stroke 2021. 
Next one is also a local municipality where we also look at the procurement of good work services on or on behalf of the municipality. And the report has been submitted on the 30th of April, 2013. And here we have made six criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authority, whereby the case numbers are reflected there. There's a case, all the cases are at the Oats Warren. And the first one is Oats Warren case 35 stroke uh, 08, 2011, where the accused was not found guilty and discharged on 31 uh, January 2014 and the Otwaring case 36 stroke uh, 08, 2011, uh, uh, former municipal manager was convicted on five charges of contravention of section 173 of the MFMA and sentenced to five years imprisonment. Uh, the next case, which is case 37 stroke 08, accused was found not guilty and discharged. And the next case, 38 stroke 08, 2011, accused was not guilty and discharged also. And the next one is also in case 297 stroke 02 stroke 2012, meta was withdrawn after representation by the defendants. And the, the second last one, the NDPP decided not to continue the prosecution following the representation by the accused. And we have also made a disciplinary action against one official and the official resigned. The number 51 is Solendam local municipality where we also look at the maladministration in the affair of the Solendam local municipality in relation to the supply chain management system of the municipality, the management of municipal finance and assets application by developers for the development of the Swollen Gate and Swollen Mark Shopping Center development and municipal approval of such application. Report has been submitted on the 28th of February, 2014. And here we have made two criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authorities. And we've made uh, uh, or the cases are Swollen Dam Docket Case 63 stroke 11, 2014 and Swollen Dam uh, Docket Case 263 stroke seven stroke 2014. And we have also made two disciplinary referral against one official and one counselor. One official resigned and no action was taken against the counselor. Uh, 52, it's Matikama local municipality in the Western Cape, where we look at the procurement of goods, work or services on behalf of the Matikama municipality and related expenditure in cure by the municipality in a manner that was not fair competitive, transparent, equitable, and cost-effective. The investigation uh, commenced on 27 July, 2020, and was finalized on 31 May, 2021. The evidence obtained in respect of the rural impact contract indicate that procurement process have been uh, irregular and unlawful by virtue of not having complied with the provision of section 217. And the outcome is as follows regarding the rural impact is four criminal referrals were made to the NPA on 23 August, 2021 against the following official. And several referral has been made and the SIU submitted a referral on the 27 November, 2020 to the office of the state attorney with the view to declare the agreement invalid with a, to the value of 650,000. And the matter is currently in the High Court of the Cape Town Provincial Division under that case number. And the matter is defended and SIU is currently awaiting court date for the hearing of the matter. And we also done disciplinary referrals, which was made against the senior manager, legal and administration on the 23rd of November, 2021. The intended disciplinary hearing was scheduled for from 10 to 11 March, 2022. And however, the official resigned with immediate effect on the 8th of March, 2022. Such referral has been made on the 8th of October, 2020 against service provider. And the rate value of cash recovered is 80,000. Also under Matsikama local municipality, we're also looking at the procurement of good work services by 
uh, on behalf of the municipality and related expenditure incurred by the municipality in the manner that was not fair, competitive, transparent, equitable, and cost effective. And in terms of the outcome, several seven criminal referrals were made to NPA on the 23rd of August, 2021. And we have made one administrative referrals to the competition commission, which was made on the 25th of October, 2021. And we have made several referrals. The SIU submitted a several referral on the 17th of June, 2021 to the office of the state attorney with the view to declare the contract invalid. Number 54 is Cedarbeck Local Municipality, where we also look at the procurement process, which were irregularly followed. And here the investigation is completed. And the outcome of the investigation is that we've made one criminal referral to the national to the NPA, which was made on the 25th of September 2020. And we have made three criminal referrals to the NPA also on the 4th of October 2021 and interdiction application, the municipality brought an application to interdict the SIU from reporting to the president on this matter. And on the basis that they demanded the opportunity to comment on the SIU finding and comments prior to completion of the report. Upon having considered the content of the SIU answering affidavit, they abandoned the application and the matter pertaining to the cost of the failed application has been postponed to 9 June 2022, and several referral is ongoing. Quantification currently is being addressed. And Cedarbeck local municipality, also we look at the procurement irregularities, whereby the outcome of the investigation is that we have made three disciplinary referral, and we have made two administrative referrals to the competition commission, and we have made one administrative referrals to SAPRA, and we have made one referrals, SARS referrals, which was made on the 30th of September, 2021. And the next one is a Lanespec local municipality, where we, it was alleged that the mayor of Lanespec and senior official appointed a close friends of theirs who owns a company in Worcester to supply foods uh, parcels to the community amounting to 353,000 prior to the approval of the section 36 deviation in terms of a uh, municipal finance management act and the investigation is closed and there was there were no outcome out of the investigation career bear local municipality uh, suspect suspected conflict of interest in relation to the procurement of ppe by the municipality. Here we investigated and out of investigation, we found that there were no outcome. And Mosul Bay local municipality also alleged procurement irregularities. Here the investigation is finalized and here we did not find any outcome. And Saldana Bay local municipality, there is alleged procurement of irregularity in respect of the distribution of and theft of food parcel. We investigated and we could not identify any irregularities and the investigation is finalized and there were no outcome. And number 60, Lang Langeberg local municipality. Also here we look at the procurement irregularities in relation to COVID-19. And here the investigation revealed that there were no irregularities. As a result, there were no outcome. Asim Kwa local municipality, also, we look at the alleged procurement irregularities and investigation commenced and is finalized and we could not find any irregularities. As a result, there were no outcome. Panel and local municipality and also allegation was the, on the, di the distribution parcel of food parcel to various uh, service by various service provider. Here, the investigation is completed and disciplinary action was recommended against the acting CFO and the acting as SCM manager on the 8th of September, 2021. Number 63, City of Johannesburg Metropolitan Municipality, where we also look, look at the procurement and contracting for goods, work on services, which were done irregularly. 
and the investigation has been finalized and final report submitted to the president where the finding is that there were financial misconduct and we set aside four contracts to the value of 18 million and the outcome is NPA is considering evidence regarding the city of Jobek uh, on charges, uh, considering the charges, and Meta were referred to the state attorney, state attorney for civil action, and competition commission referrals were made also regarding the service provider, and the other one is the city of Swane Metropolitan Municipality, where we also look at the procurement irregularities. And the finding there was, was financial misconduct and contravention of uh, Municipal Finance Management Act. We have done two disciplinary referrals to the city of Tuani, uh, whereby they're considering the evidence. And we understand that further action will be taken against official and one official is deceased, so no action will be taken against that official. The number 65 is Madibe local municipality, where we also look at the procurement uh, of goods, work, and services on behalf of the municipality. And we also look at irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure, where we look particularly on in terms of the services, in terms of the maintenance lease agreement for a period of 36 months in respect of the municipal pool vehicle and payments made to the value of 280 million. And here the investigation is finalized and several proceedings on going to in at the special tribunal. And out of the investigation, we have made one criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authority, and we have referred two disciplinary referrals against the municipal uh, official and referrals of contracts to the value of 190 million to the special tribunals to be set aside. An update will be provided later. Number 66 is Moretele local municipality where we also look at the procurement irregularities, particularly when we look at the expenditure incurred by the municipality or the state regarding the two contract value to the value of 304 million. And the investigation has been finalized and report has been submitted. And the outcome of the investigation is that we have made two criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authority and two disciplinary referrals against the municipal official. A contract to the value of 129 million is referred to the special tribunal to be set aside and progress will be submitted later. And number 67 is city of uh, Matosana local municipality where we also look at the procurement irregularities, an investigation is finalized, report is submitted to the presidency. The outcome is that we have made two disciplinary referral for senior manager and, and a mental manager official. Number 67, JB Marks local municipality, where we also look at the procurement irregularities, an investigation is finalized, a report submitted. The outcome is that we have found three disciplinary referrals which has been submitted against a senior manager, a middle manager, and a junior manager. And we also made one NPA referral for senior manager. And we have also made one executive action referrals for one office bearer. And the 69, it's a Rato local municipality where we also look at the procurement irregularity, investigation finalized, report submitted. And the outcome is two disciplinary referrals for one senior and one middle manager. And we have also made one NPA referral for one senior manager official. And in terms of the ongoing investigation that are currently ongoing, we'll start with Houghton Province. Houghton Province, we are looking at uh, the city local municipality. And in terms of this investigation, we are looking at the procurement irregularities in respect of an automated time and attendance system, organizational re-engineering related services, the supply and delivery of fuel, refusal removal services, accounting related services. And we also look at the failure by the municipality to pay or to pay timelessly debts 
of the municipality and failure of or refusal by the performance audit committee and unlawful or proper conduct by a councillor, official or employee of the municipality. In terms of the outcome of this one, there's potential cash of asset regarding 50,000, whereby acknowledgement of debt has been signed. And NPA referral, we have done NPA referral for financial misconduct. And we have done disciplinary referral for my financial misconduct against the one uh, uh, manager of SCM. This investigation is almost finalized and the report currently is under review. The other one is Ekuruleni Metropolitan Municipality, whereby we also looking, we looked at the procurement or contracting for goods or service on behalf of the municipality, particularly in relation to contract uh, uh, relating to construction of a new false Loras hospital public transport facility. Uh, in and the two contracts to the value of the 38.9 million. And here the investigation is uh, also finalized where the report is under review. And the outcome of the investigation is that we have referred 10 NPA referral for financial misconduct in terms of MFMA. And we have done two disciplinary referrals for, my, for financial misconduct. And we have done 10 administrative action to the National Tre Treasury for blacklisting of a service provider and also referrals to the Engineering Council. And we have done civil litigation to recover the 1.8 million for services that was not rendered. The next one is city of Jobek, Johannesburg in the Houghton province. Here we are looking at the procurement or contracting for vehicles and vehicle maintenance services from fire radar and repair and maintenance for work at fire station, closed circuit television equipment, office accommodation and furniture for the integrated operational center, uh, which was done on behalf of the municipality and uh, any unlawful or improper conduct by employee of the municipality or any unlawful or improper conduct by official con uh, contractors, suppliers, service providers. Here, the investigation also is almost finalized where the report is currently under review. And in terms of the outcome, we have done 12 NPA referrals for contravention of MFMA and fraud. And we have done seven disciplinary referrals for financial misconduct and there's possible civil litigation regarding the two contract to the value of 200 million. And the matter was referred to the SIU civil litigation unit for consideration. In terms of Limpopo, we looked at Tabazimbi local, local municipality, where we also look at the procurement in relation to fleet related good services auctioneering of us or assets disposal, drafting or implementation of asset disposal policy, waste management services, provision of office equipment, the conversion of conventional prepaid uh, meter to smart meter, human resource related goods services and services. And also it goes on and on. And particularly we're looking at maladministration and affair of the municipality and uh, in respect of the employee tax deduction and payments of such deduction to SARS. And also failure or refusal of the municipality to timely act upon conclusion of findings which were made or implement recommendation contained in the final report uh, regarding the possible abuse of office forensic investigation which was done and submitted on the 29th of uh, October, 2014. And also we look at any irregular conduct by councillor, official employee of the municipality. Here the uh, investigation is completed and whereby in one part, the report has been submitted to the president and there's another part where the investigation is ongoing. And in terms of the finalized investigation, we have done seven criminal referrals to the National Prosecuting Authority. 
and civil proceeding has been instituted in the special tribunal for the matter relating to 49.8 million contract and saving has been made or prevented uh, pending the conclusion of the contract uh, to the value of 27 million and the SIU successfully interdicted the municipality from signing an addendum to the contract already signed and criminal referrals to be served to the NPA regarding the ongoing proclamation whereby we are looking at two matters where we'll be making referrals to the NPA and several proceedings will be instituted against the matter that is currently ongoing relating to 77 million and court papers have been drafted in order to set aside the contract. And in, in respect of Elias Putzale, the local municipality, uh, we're also looking here at procurement irregularities and we also looking at any undisclosed and or unauthorized interest that councillor or official of the employee of the municipality had regarding their association with suppliers or service provider. And we're also looking at maladministration in the affair of the alias the local municipality, any improper or unlawful conduct by councillor or official employee of the municipality or contract contractors. And the outcome of the investigation is that uh, we have made 29 disciplinary referrals against municipal official, and we have made four executive uh, or administrative action. And this is pending decision by the municipal uh, municipality in order to to block some or to to refer some of those official to be blacklisted. And number of referrals made for prosecuting authority is 10 and rent value of potential cash on assets to be recovered is 81.8 million regarding the admission of debt sign. The amount is uh, 17.5, which is paid to date. And the investigation is finalized and the report is currently under review. The other one is the Mopani District Municipality where we also look at the procurement irregularities, particularly relation to the supply construction or commissioning of ventilated improve, improved pit toilet, uh, of which it was uh, procured in terms of the, and also the Greater Guiani Municipality tender, uh, whereby we look at the construction, installation and repair refurbishment and maintenance or removal of, uh, removal of boreholes by twin corner construction. And we also looking at the maladministration in the affair of the municipality or any losses or prejudice suffered by the municipalities. And we're also looking at the supply and construction of the commission of the VIP pit toilet the failure or refusal to refund IRENAS or pre-mature payment, the establishment or irregular maintenance of a vendor database. Uh, uh, and we are also looking approximately 210 million that was required to return to National Treasury when it did not spend the money in the financial year 2013-12-13. Then in terms of the outcomes, number of referrals paid for disciplinary action is 18, and number referred for executive or administrative action is six. Number of referral made to the relevant prosecuting authority is 34. Rent value of potential cash or assets to be recovered is 20.8 million, and process has been initiated as the civil litigation unit in order to assess the potential claim against the, the service provider. The other one is Mohalako and a local municipality where we look at the procurement of goods and work or services in relation to those services that are listed below. And in terms of the outcome, we made the following 
There is criminal referrals to National Prosecuting Authority, six referrals made for two municipal managers and one chief uh, financial officer. And we also made several referrals to civil litigation unit in the SIU, where several referrals is under consideration by the civil unit to the value of 167 million. And we have also made disciplinary referral to municipality. That is one referral for official, one referral for six uh, uh, BE, BEC members, and one referral for five BAC members. And the investigation is still ongoing in terms of this matter. With regard to Northwest, we also look at the procurement irregularities regarding the PPE, and we look at the Nakamudiri Munema, where currently the investigation is ongoing. And with regard to Eastern Cape, we also look at the Buffalo uh, City Metropolitan Municipality. And here also the SIU uh, investigation is investigating allegation of corruption after receiving a whistleblower information that the head of supply management is colluding with service provider and SIU is reviewing on, and compiling, is reviewing compliance with the prescribed legislation. And here the investigation is ongoing with regard to this municipality. And with regard to Western Cape, we are looking at city of Cape Town Metropolitan Municipality. And here allegation are uh, uh, irregularities in respect of 52.8 million establishment of a temporary homeless person shelter in Strandfontein. And we finding is that the investigation revealed that the SEM process followed by the city of Cape Town in sourcing the various item and service provider required was irregular and as such fall, falls to be uh, set aside. And the outcome is that the SIU is in the process of compiling instruction to the state attorney with the view to brief council to set aside the viability of appropriate civil action and the viability of civil action and recovery to be made. The investigation in regard to this matter is ongoing. The other one is Saldana Bay Local Municipality. Here we also, it's alleged that during 2017 stroke 2018 financial year, Saldana Bay Local Municipality uh, official appointed a secure, secure met under that bid to render security service at various municipality. It is alleged that the appointment was irregular and the contract amount was alleged to have been 6 million and it, and it was awarded without due process and it increases to the value of 13 million. With regard to this one, the investigation is ongoing. Currently, the outcome that we have made is administrative referral to UIF and PCRA and we have also made criminal referral in respect of fraud committed by a relevant service provider. And we have done three disciplinary referrals in respect of Saldana Bay local municipality official. The other one is Overstrand local municipality. This investigation is still also new, was received in December 2021, where we are looking at an interim internal audit uh, report, which was compiled by the Overstrand local municipality, where it look at where it, it was titled housing compliant matter. And here the allegation is that the small administration regarding the approval allocation or payments of housing subsidy, as well as the allocation of sites or constructed housing to person who were not entitled thereto in relation to Swartam roadside a housing project of the Swartam Integrated Residential Development Program with that reference number. The investigation is still ongoing here. And with regard to Northern Cape, also the allegation relate, are relating to procurement irregularities with regard to some of those services that are listed there, uh, mostly in relation to PPE. 
And the outcome to date is that we have done criminal referrals against former accounting officer and one service provider to the NPA. And there's a possible civil proceeding that is we are waiting uh, evidence to be evaluated so that we can able to institute this uh, civil proceeding. Mpumalanga province, we look at Govenbeke local municipality where we also look at the, uh, mid, where we look at the uh, PPE procurement irregularities. And in terms of the outcome, there's potential cash on asset to be recovered is 102, where we signed six acknowledgement of debt for price inflation. And we have recommended for disciplinary action against two of municipal official and the investigation is ongoing. And the other one is in Komaze local municipality, still in Mpumalanga, where we also look at the PPE procurement, particularly 13 service providers were requested to supply PPE goods or equipment at a total of 11.8 million and a total of 26 service providers were requested to provide water at a value of 12.9 million. And here the investigation is still ongoing. And this is the end of all the ongoing and the finalized investigation. And therefore now I'll hand over to the civil litigation so that they can give progress with regard to the ongoing civil litigation. Over to you, Advocate. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. It's uh, Harold Fasafi speaking here. I've been asked uh, by Dr. Wells, our Chief Legal Counsel, to deal with this area. Um, in the interest of time, I will not repeat everything that, that uh, um, uh, Mr. Lakshet has already referred to. It is dealt with uh, uh, in, the, in the bigger part of the, of the presentation. I will merely give you a, a summary in the sense of saying that currently uh, there are 13 matters uh, in court uh, uh, flowing from, from uh, local government uh, investigations. Six of these matters to the total value of approximately 326 million rand uh, is being dealt with in the special tribunal and seven matters to the value of a little over 1 billion rand, 1 billion and 25 million rand uh, approximately uh, are being dealt with in the, in the high court uh, in its various divisions uh, across the, the country. Um, the status of these, of these matters are dealt with in the, in the presentation by uh, uh, Mr. Laketu, and obviously, if there are any questions on a specific matter, uh, we can deal with that uh, uh, during a later stage of, of the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, you are muted. Sorry. Uh, honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, uh, I will proceed uh, at this stage uh, just to indicate uh, our observations as we do all of these investigations. Because uh, uh, one would agree that uh, all of these investigations are really revealing a whole lot of uh, maladministration malpractice <clears throat> and uh, the, the, the level of corruption. Now, what we have observed uh, as root causes of all of this, amongst others, uh, is that uh, there are procurement irregularities uh, that are committed wantonly, and as a result, uh, action has to be taken. Uh, we've also observed <clears throat> that uh, there's a poor record keeping uh, in, in, in various uh, municipalities, and that results you know, in, in, in serious uh, uh, maladministration with regard to the maintenance uh, of some of the contracts. Uh, uh, contract management uh, becomes poor as we observe there. Uh, as I indicated when we started, we also find <clears throat> employment irregularities. Uh, this is where you know, appointments are made uh, without following process. 
as I indicated, we find poor, poor management. And uh, there's also in other instances, uh, leadership instability, uh, which are, are, are a contribution. I've indicated that there's a number of uh, observations around poor governance, uh, where uh, municipal councils uh, do not function as expected, poor project management, where the contracts are not implemented appropriately, and ultimately uh, failure to deliver the services as expected. Uh, we've also uh, observed that uh, from a governance perspective and internal governance, there are in many instances, no appropriate segregation of duties. We'll find that one process to the end is handled uh, by, by one person, and that is counter good governance. And as a result, uh, it is subject to abuse. Uh, there's poor business processes. Uh, we also found that uh, in many instances, there are, there's a need to strengthen risk management, uh, need to strengthen financial management. And another important observation is just general lack of consequence management. And this, of course, it's really, really a concern, uh, of course, like the others, but this one, this one leads to the perpetuation of wrongdoing. And it really breeds uh, this culture of impunity uh, that we are faced with. So the implementation of uh, consequence management will assist us uh, in this regard. Next slide. Uh, we still proceed uh, with the root cause analysis. We've also found that uh, uh, there's inadequate, inadequate skills ranging from uh, either uh, poorly qualified, incompetence uh, to do the job, uh, and, and that's, that, that's amongst others what contributes to that. Vacancies in key positions uh, result in the capacity of the municipality being negatively affected. High turnover of start, staff causes continuity issues. Again, poor revenue management, as we indicate, the inability to collect debt from consumers of services, failure to investigate and recover unauthorized, irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure provided for in the MFMA. Uh, we've also found, and this is the general phenomenon, uh, where uh, officials, when they are faced with uh, 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 disciplinary processes, they resign before the investigate before the investigation commence or during the course of the investigation. So lately, when we experience that, uh, we brief our civil litigation part department to ensure that we freeze the pensions of this uh, of these officials, so that they can feel that uh, they cannot just do wrongdoing and then just leave uh, the department just like that. Uh, and and. We've also following up where they have been appointed in other areas, uh, in other spheres of government. We follow them there wherever they are so that, uh, so that uh, action, actions can be taken. Now, uh, as I indicated, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, having observed all of this, the question that the committee then would probably ask is, you know, what is next? What do we really need to do to improve the system over and above, you know, uh, implementing consequence management, civil litigation recoveries. We need the improvement of the system so that, you know, all of this can be prevented. Now, as I indicated, we do systemic recommendations and we forward them to the relevant accounting or authorities or accounting officers. We work with them to ensure that uh, uh, we, we improve the system. Uh, uh, just as a note, you know, yesterday, uh, ourselves, SIU, NPA, and uh, uh, the Hawks, uh, we were represented. We presented at the Salga, Salga Summit that is going on in Beechwood. And the summit is more around performance management, good governance, and so on. So the, 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 the concurrence of views there is that there's really a need to improve 
and the, the, the recent approach of the district model has to be taken into account as we improve the, the system. Uh, Honorable Chair, the next slide, uh, I will be quick on it, uh, deals with some of the anti-corruption measures that uh, has been put in place. Next slide. Uh, uh, under the auspices of the, of the uh, uh, anti-corruption task team, which the Honorable Committee would be familiar with, uh, uh, chaired by uh, General Libya, uh, we've got, we've got uh, uh, the approach where we take to deal with sectors that are vulnerable to corruption. And local government has been identified as one of those. Now, to deal with that effectively and include all the stakeholders, uh, we have learned from the health sector, which established the Health Sector Anti-Corruption Forum. We have now established the Local Government Anti-Corruption Forum. And this includes various uh, stakeholders. It includes uh, civil society. It includes government, law enforcement agencies. All of this with the quest of ensuring that we really consolidate, collaborate uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the wrongdoings are identified, detected, investigated, and the outcomes are reached in the resolution. Uh, uh, we've been in engagement uh, with the Ministry of Cocta, uh, which will champion this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this forum, and uh, uh, the minister will probably uh, issue a communication soon in terms of launching this. So, so Honorable Chair, uh, there's, there's various aspects in terms of looking at this uh, uh, issues in terms of what needs to, to, to improve. Uh, you would have probably followed up on the, on the civil litigation part uh, that, uh, you know, they are underway to make sure that we recover. Uh, there's various municipalities that are affected, uh, but we must just make sure that we drive to conclusion uh, those recoveries and the consequence management. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. We appreciate the, the time and the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Advocate. Uh, I would suggest that we immediately uh, uh, call on the DPCI to, to vent. Uh, I'm sure members were taking notes. Good morning, uh, once more, honorable chairperson and honorable members. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Thank you, uh, honorable chairperson. I'm going to be doing the presentation on behalf of uh, the DPCI. As I have indicated, I'm accompanied by uh, Major General Musibi, uh, Major General Moodley, as well as uh, Brigadier uh, Matruos. As a matter of introduction, the presentation overview will cover the area of uh, the mandate of the DPCI, the structure of uh, the DPCI, the work profile of the DPCI, uh, the purpose and the introduction of uh, the presentation, uh, the summary of corruption cases relating to local government, and the provincial overview of municipalities involved in the number of uh, these cases. And then uh, we will conclude with uh, the summary of uh, the matters related to COVID-19 as far as uh, local government is concerned. Uh, the issue of the mandate, I will not deliberate much, but uh, safe to say that uh, the mandate of the DPCI is actually anchored on section 17 of the Police Act, uh, which says that the functions of the directorate is to prevent, combat, and investigate national priority offenses which uh, in the opinion of the national head of the directorate need to be addressed as such. And some of the offenses are referred to in chapter two of section 34 of the Prevention and Combating of uh, Corrupt Activities Act. So through 
the DPCI worked through multidisciplinary approach in conducting some major uh, investigation as well as uh, project driven investigations. So at the bottom is just to show the bigger uh, components that are involved in the investigation within the uh, Directorate for Priority Crime Investigation. It can be seen that uh, the red one is the serious corruption uh, investigation. Uh, the middle one is the serious commercial crime investigation. And the last one is the serious organized crime. So those are the major operational uh, units in the DPC. Uh, the rest of uh, the units are supportive in nature. As it can be seen on this slide, this one is the structure of the DPCI. It just shows on a national level what is that the, how the uh, DPCI is structured. You can see that at the top, top is the national head and below is the deputy and uh, national head. You also have got uh, the divisional investigation and forensic accounting investigation. And then uh, those that uh, report directly to the national head are as the provincial heads of the DPCI. In each province, we have got uh, the head of uh, the DPCI. We also have uh, executive support service that uh, assists the office of the national head. Uh, and that, that is the structure of uh, the DPCI that uh, is involved in dealing with matters in the directorate. In this uh, uh, slide, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members, one is just uh, showing the work profile of the DPCI. It can be seen that uh, we are supposed to be uh, 5,332, but so far we haven't reached that uh, uh, particular fixed establishment, we are still at uh, nearly 50% of the workforce, and uh, we still need to get a uh, 50%. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, the, this uh, capacity is nearly the same as at the time when the DPCI was established in 2009. So we are actually having uh, about 1,500 investigating officers that are seized with the investigation of uh, the matters in the DPCI. The rest will obviously be command structure, the uh, civilian personnel, as well as uh, those who are in a specialized support activities, such as uh, those who will be dealing with uh, the financial investigation, those who will be supporting the asset for future unit of uh, the NPI and the like. So due to the complexity and sophistication of uh, the cases that uh, we, we are handling, some of them have obviously taken for some years to be finalized. And uh, the honorable members and honorable chair, we, one will just uh, like to show that uh, as at the end of the third quarter, of uh, this financial year, uh, we have been having on hand 22,200 matters under investigation. These have to be dealt with by the 1,500 investigators that I have pointed out. And among these uh, matters, I need to pause a little just to indicate that uh, among these matters that uh, the honorable chairpersons and the honorable members can see from these 22,000 matters that uh, we are seized with, we already have got uh, 13,536 accused persons that are currently serving before the different courts in the Republic. So that is the work that uh, is queried by these investigators that uh, we can see. Uh, 
some of uh, the work that uh, we are doing obviously will not be covered in the uh, presentation that uh, one will be doing as it will be noted that uh, we are dealing with the current matters. We are not dealing with those that have already been finalized. As uh, one shall have observed in the presentation of the SIU, some of the matters emanating from uh, 2011, they shall have already been finalized either with the conviction, acquittal, or final withdrawal. So those matters we will not be uh, reflecting on them. We are reflecting only the matters that are currently uh, on hand. Uh, Chairperson, allow me just uh, to hint so that uh, some of the matters that are not going to be uh, appearing on the presentation, I can just highlight on what we are seized with. Just yesterday, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members in the free state at a water local municipality, uh, we had uh, the success of a person who was uh, arrested previously in 2018. On the 5th of December, this individual was arrested. And then uh, by yesterday, the uh, sentence was uh, meted out 10 years for corruption and five years for fraud. But both these uh, sentences have been wholly suspended for a period of five years, uh, which means that uh, we might not be seeing uh, the publication of these matters, uh, but otherwise uh, it is a success that uh, we have registered regarding the municipality. Uh, in the Eastern Cape, uh, Honorable Chairperson, yesterday, there was a success in Quebec, uh, the former uh, Port Elizabeth, where a search and seizure was conducted by the uh, members of the DPCI at uh, Ikuba Yeletembu local municipality, where an amount of 12 million uh, rent is involved. So in uh, again, in the Eastern Cape, Alfred Nzo municipality. Uh, the case that was reported in 2019 uh, involving uh, 38 million rand, six accused uh, were arrested uh, yesterday. What happened is that uh, the warrant of arrest were issued on the 23rd of March, uh, which is uh, Wednesday. By Thursday yesterday, the warrant were executed and among the suspects that have been arrested is the chief financial officer, the former acting municipal manager, the manager of uh, supply chain management, the director of the company that I was uh, colluding with this uh, government official, as well as the company itself that was involved in the corrupt activities. Uh, the case itself is postponed, uh, Chairperson, after appearing yesterday uh, at court to the 9th of May, 2022. It is not only these matters, uh, Honorable Chairperson. In the Northwest, we can indicate that uh, in Ramotsuela Muila uh, local municipality, uh, just yesterday, uh, the accused person was sentenced to six years in prison for fraud and, and theft. And then uh, in Kosovo Natal, uh, where we are currently uh, operating, there has been a, a Tequil municipality uh, just on the yesterday. A sentence was meted out to the accused person who have uh, defrauded the municipality. And that particular accused person was sentenced yesterday to three years imprisonment. This three years imprisonment has been wholly suspended for a period of five years on condition that uh, the person does not commit similar offenses in this period. But again, once more, the order has been given by the court that uh, the accused person, now the convict, must pay back what uh, he has defrauded the uh, municipality. So at least, although the sentence is not custodial in nature, at least to the directive that uh, payment must be made back to the municipality that have suffered 
uh, these are not the only ones uh, in all the municipalities there are these successes that have been achieved uh, yesterday again in the free state uh, in a case of park road that was registered in october 2021 that is last year this uh, matter involved both the south africans the national of uh, the Soto, where uh, for feature order was given uh, yesterday sure. so one appreciate that uh, there is a work that i will not be featuring in the presentation that uh, we are uh, doing but it is worth mentioning uh, just uh, in all of the municipalities in all of the provinces we are having some successes that i will not be featuring in the presentation uh, chairperson may i also hint that uh, it is not only in this space of corruption affecting the uh, municipalities there are also other corruption affecting other departments just uh, yesterday alone uh, chairperson i can mention that in Haugen province 28 suspects have been arrested for uh, defrauding the uh, department of home affairs where smart ids are being issued to foreigners and uh, among these uh, suspects that have been arrested are 12 foreigners uh, 16 south africa as well as the leader of this so chairperson uh, in uh, various municipalities we are seeing this uh, i can't say in limpopo just uh, last week the 16th of march we shall have seen those that have been defrauding the uh, local government there Cox, Cox, uh, that 19 of those ghost workers that have been uh, feeding on the money from the municipalities have appeared in court and their case is now postponed to the 22nd of uh, June uh, this year. These are but just of uh, the matters that I needed to be uh, highlighting on before I go deep into the uh, presentation. Chairperson, uh, I'm now going to uh, move into the uh, presentation that uh, we have put together, which is a summary. As uh, the detail itself is more than 200 slides, we are not going to do that one. We only present the summary to show the matters that uh, we are dealing with. As a matter of introduction, the purpose of the presentation is to provide an overview to the uh, portfolio committee on the uh, COCTA, on the investigation of corruption cases in the local government, including the investigation on the matter that uh, uh, are still uh, pending. Uh, May it also be noted that uh, various factors influence the investigations and uh, it also affects the timeline that uh, it takes to finalize these matters. Some of them is just that they uh, have been uh, going on for some time. They get delayed due to the accused persons who may advance several reasons and I don't have to and uh, remind members of the portfolio committee that some of the matters are older than the hawks itself and they have been uh, saved in such an example one can cite uh, the matter of uh, the uh, which is saving in uh, Natal on the matter relating to the um, firearms that shall have been uh, acquired uh, with regard to former uh, senior uh, leaders of uh, the country. I will not uh, uh, repeat in on those because uh, it, it is well known that uh, the matter has been pending for quite a long time. So we are keeping these matters. They are not disposed of. Uh, Chairperson, if uh, uh, you can allow me to move off the video so that I can be able to uh, open some of the areas that are uh, overshadowed uh -huh. by the picture. Hello? I just want to point out as an example, honorable chairperson, that uh, the committee will notice that uh, among the matters that uh, we are dealing with affecting the municipalities uh, is what shall have happened uh, in Pazulu uh, Natal at uh, the Etequini municipality. Uh, in this uh, regard, 
uh, more than 20 accused persons are appearing before court. It is well known. And then uh, one can see the amount that uh, is involved, financial prejudice through the amount of 389 million rands. It, it may not be a matter that has been referred by the SIU, but it is a matter that uh, affects municipalities, which we deal with all of this, regardless of the origin of uh, the investigation. Chairperson, as it can be seen, the amount of work that has been put in this type of investigation that involved 2,000 791 charges. So the charges means that uh, each charge is actually a crime on its own, which means that generally is supposed to be uh, 2,791 dockets. But because we, invo we investigate in one docket and uh, to avoid the multiplicity of the cases dealing with the same matter, uh, this matter, shows that uh, 22 arrests were effected, as I have indicated, that include two entities. It can be seen the amount of statements that are being put when we say that uh, the matter is finally investigated. Uh, more than a thousand statements were obtained in this matter. And the matter is uh, pending, uh, the case is postponed to the 29th of this month in the high court. And uh, the charges are various from organized crime, corruption, and the like. So this, are, this is just a type of an example of uh, how complicated some of these matters can be. But it can be seen that uh, this is not an old matter. We have uh, taken from uh, December 2018, as the case can be seen at the top, 2018, so far we are ready for trial. And uh, it means that we have put a lot of resources on this matter. May I pause to say that uh, honorable chairperson and honorable member, in these municipalities, we are about to visit them again on a matter that uh, may be even more financial wise, bigger than what we are seeing here. So this is the, these are the matters that uh, we are seized with. We expect that uh, very soon we will be visiting the municipality again. Uh, on, the, on the corruption regarding the uh, municipalities, he, this one is just a summary Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Member, it shows that uh, the matters that uh, we are currently dealing with, the number of cases that are at court is 68. May I repeat that uh, the number of cases does not represent the number of accused persons. The number of accused persons may be higher. So 11th, more than a uh, 13,000 accused persons that I have mentioned that are currently at court. It means that the 68 is also addressing some of those. Number of cases that are pending decision uh, affecting the municipalities is 26. And then a number of cases that are under investigation is uh, 125. So some of the referrals that uh, the SIU will be mentioning will be incorporated in one docket and not uh, many dockets as uh, the referral may uh, point out. So this 125 will be uh, in all of the uh, municipality countrywide. Uh, we have just tried to uh, make a breakdown show in which municipalities are these uh, cases being handled? And then uh, those that are on the court roll, in which area are they, uh, which is, will be reflected in the first column. And then uh, those that are submitted for decision, uh, which are in the second column. And those that are uh, 
under investigation and the number of uh, cases in total that uh, we are showing in this uh, slide. So when one look at uh, the breakdown in terms of uh, the municipalities. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Chair. Yeah. The presenter, his voice is drowned by the noise behind him. We can't uh, hear him now. Uh, I, I hope, uh, uh, Lieutenant General, you can note that I was, uh, because you did uh, indicate where you are, but I'm not sure if uh, the other people are aware that you have got this task as well. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. We have just uh, cautioned those that are uh, close by so that uh, they can uh, minimize uh, their, their voices. Uh, I hope that uh, it will be better, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh -huh. uh, it's much better. Okay. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And then uh, the matters uh, that uh, are shown here, it, in respect of uh, each uh, province, we try to show the number of investigations. Uh, in the Eastern Cape, it will be seen that there are 17 municipalities that are involved. And the number of cases that uh, emanate from that those municipalities will be 43 so at the far extreme right it will be the number of uh, cases that uh, we are handling and then uh, on the left hand side it will be showing the uh, number of municipalities that are involved so it is all the provinces the free stage 12 where we are dealing with 20 meters in Gauden is uh, four municipalities where we are dealing with uh, 12 meters. In KwaZulu-Natal we uh, are four municipalities where we are dealing with uh, 41 uh, meters. And uh, in Limpopo province is eight municipalities where we are dealing with 20 meters. And uh, in Mpumalanga is uh, seven municipalities where we are dealing with eight meters. Uh, in the Northern Cape is 14 municipalities where we are dealing with 22 meters. And uh, in the Northwest uh, province is uh, 13 uh, municipalities where we are dealing with 24 investigations. And uh, in the Western Cape province, 15 municipalities where we are dealing with uh, 29 meters. Those are the uh, municipal 102 municipalities that uh, are reflected in the uh, uh, investigation. We have just uh, broken down these municipalities that uh, we are talking about in each uh, province so that uh, it can be seen in which municipality specifically are the investigation uh, taking place. Some of the investigation chairperson are at a sensitive stage. That is why we are uh, dealing with just uh, the indication of uh, the municipalities involved so that uh, we don't uh, hint to the suspect because something might happen to the exhibits, some of which exhibits might still be in the areas where the suspects might still be uh, operating from. It can be seen the number of municipalities, uh, honorable chairperson, the name of the municipalities let me not mention them by name, but I think that uh, it can be seen that the municipalities that uh, were being mentioned by the SIU are reflected here. Uh, the Nelson uh, Bay Mandela uh, Metro municipalities, the Amatola, the Buffalo, uh, all those municipalities, Mbasha District municipality, Mount a leaf local municipality. Some of them have just uh, one investigation, but uh, these are the investigation that are uh, covered that involve this uh, municipality in the Eastern Cape. Uh, in the next province, uh, one can see uh, the number of uh, municipalities 
uh, that are involved and the name of uh, the municipalities uh, here in the free state, Malutia Pofum, uh, which uh, is the one that have got uh, more investigation as compared to the other, it will uh, be followed by a Mafube local municipality. Uh, the rest of uh, the municipalities have got uh, fewer uh, cases two and one, but these are the distribution of uh, the investigation in the free state municipalities. Uh, in this uh, slide of uh, the Howden municipalities, which, which have got uh, fewer uh, municipalities, uh, we have got uh, also fewer cases as compared to some of the provinces, but the 12 methods that uh, we are reflecting here uh, are both in the uh, city of uh, Johannesburg, uh, Ekrulen, Midfall, uh, and as well as uh, the uh, municipal council pension fund, which is not necessarily uh, situated in the municipal, but uh, the uh, office, the head office situated in the province. Uh, there may be some of uh, the provinces that may be uh, missing uh, the Tswani uh, municipality. Uh, coming to the uh, KwaZulu Natal, uh, we have indicated that uh, in Etequini municipality, that is where we have picked up a number of uh, investigation, uh, which is followed by the Musunduzi local municipality. And then uh, the third one will be uh, the one that uh, comes with uh, five with the uh, Mapumulo municipalities and then followed by the one with four uh, matters with which is Heriguala. The rest of the municipalities are fewer cases, is uh, two cases, and then uh, in others is just one uh, case per municipality. But that is the distribution of the matters in KwaZulu Natal. As I have hint hinted, we are about to visit Etequini municipality again. Uh, in this uh, uh, matter uh, of Limpopo, uh, one municipality will be seen that uh, uh, the case itself uh, was registered in uh, Ekrulen, which is supposed to be in uh, still in uh, Howden province. But uh, when the investigator was being transferred to Limpopo, we did not remove the case from the investigator to avoid disruption of the work that uh, the investigator was assisted with. We just uh, transferred the matter to Limpopo, but otherwise it affected a municipality in Howden uh, province. Uh, in Limpopo, the uh, municipality that uh, can be seen to be a uh, leading is that of Lebelen Kumbi, a uh, local municipality. And I think that uh, there shall be a, a arrest that shall, uh, shall have been effected uh, two weeks ago in that uh, uh, local municipality. And then uh, there are other municipalities that uh, we are working on. And um, I think that uh, these are the cases, uh, the, the following municipality is uh, Vapalavuro uh, municipality. We are about to finalize some of the matters and indeed some of the matters will obviously be uh, reflected in the VBS investigation, which is not necessarily coming with the SIU recommendation or uh, coming as a, as a exclusive municipal investigation, but they are accommodated in the VBS investigation that uh, I think it shall have been hint, it will be reflected uh, when the uh, uh, NPA show the VBS uh, status. Uh, with regard to the uh, next uh, municipality in uh, Mpumalanga, the number of cases are very few. Uh, in Emalashen is the one that has registered uh, two. The rest of uh, the municipalities that uh, we are investigating is uh, one meter uh, per municipality. So those are the number of uh, the matters that uh, we are dealing with uh, Mpumalanga municipality, there are not many. 
but uh, we continue to investigate those two. Uh, with regard to the um, next province, uh, in this one, it can be seen that uh, the number of cases that are leading on this slide is five in Solplaiki municipality, which is the one that have got uh, more as compared to other uh, municipalities. And then the other municipalities that follow is only two uh, cases per municipality. I think those are municipalities some as, such as uh, Namakoi municipality, uh, Ubuntu municipality, uh, and then uh, Mtanjini local municipality, uh, Pogwani uh, local municipality. The rest of uh, the municipalities uh, which are in the Northern Cape have got uh, one case per municipality. So those are the matters in the Northern Cape. And then uh, coming to the, uh, this slide in the uh, Northwest province, uh, the one that have got more cases is uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda District Municipality, which have got uh, six matters. Uh, it is followed by the uh, first that appears on the screen, which is uh, Akwasi Hills Local Municipality, followed by Gahisano Mulobo Local Municipality. The rest of the municipalities uh, is uh, uh, either two or one, of which those that have got two is the Greater Daun Local Municipality, as well as uh, JB Max Local Municipality. The rest of uh, the municipality have got uh, one meter that is pending. So, but those, that is the list of the municipalities that uh, we are seized with the investigation on. And then uh, coming to the uh, next uh, slide in the uh, Western Cape, uh, the municipality that is uh, leading with the number of investigation is Old Sworn municipality. In the Old Sewer municipality, we have got 12 matters that uh, we are handling. And uh, in the other municipalities, we have got two and one. Those that have got two cases per municipality is the Beaufort West municipality, which have got two. George municipality have got two, as well as the uh, city of Cape Town municipality that have got two. The rest of the municipalities in the Western Cape province have got one matter each. Uh, I will not be reading uh, individual municipalities as appearing on the uh, slide, which uh, the honorable members uh, shall have uh, received. So that will be concluding uh, the municipalities that uh, are under investigation uh, by the DPCI. On the uh, next one that uh, also uh, deals with the COVID-19 matters uh, that also affect the municipalities. Uh, some of them uh, will obviously be creating some sort of uh, double uh, indication that uh, it shows the uh, Department of Health, but also that affect uh, specific uh, municipalities. These are the matters that uh, we are dealing with. Uh, the, the municipalities that I can highlight is that uh, in the uh, Limpopo, there are four matters that uh, uh, involve the COVID-19 uh, related matters. And then uh, in our Tambo district municipalities, there are two that related to COVID uh, matters. And uh, I will not elaborate on this, but it's just an indication that uh, municipalities were not spared with regard to COVID-19 uh, matters. These COVID-19 matters, we are dealing with them in the fusion center model. And uh, in that uh, fusion center model, there is already in general uh, more than uh, 116 
uh, suspects that have been arrested on several COVID-19, but those that are affecting uh, the municipalities will obviously be uh, limited. The majority will be affecting uh, the in unemployment insurance fund and other uh, fund that uh, were designed to assist on COVID-19. And then a uh, progress in a summary uh, format, we can just say that there are uh, 12 matters under investigation, uh, four matters are at court, uh, which is not an indication of a number of uh, accused persons, and what met one matter is pending a uh, decision. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I think that uh, will just uh, be showing a breakdown of where this matter, 12 matters, are situated in terms of uh, the, the province, uh, which I will need not uh, repeat on that. But uh, as I have said, that uh, a number of successes are being achieved. And if one was just to look at the media reports that are mostly reflected on a written uh, platforms, the successes are there. And then uh, some of the arrests, you may not be necessarily seeing them as you would like to see them because we are trying to balance what may be perceived as a Hollywood style type of uh, securing the attendance of accused persons in court as compared to a normal way of uh, just securing the accused without making that uh, something that sound like a Hollywood style type of uh, work. So that concludes the presentation from the DPCI. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I submit. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant General. Um, I think immediately then would uh, uh, allow uh, NPA to present uh, Advocate Patoy. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to ask that our presentation be flighted, but whilst they're doing that in the interest of time, given we were meant to be 20 minutes each, Chair, we've actually sent a much more comprehensive presentation uh, to the committee. The, the, the report, the presentation is much shorter. Um, and because it deals with matters in court, I suppose most of the, of the information has already been shared with you with regard to investigations. Um, honorable Chair, Honorable Members, let me at the outset um, emphasize again the importance of us, um, the accountability functions of the Portfolio Committee uh, meetings of, of government. Um, we last made a presentation as you were in 2019 um, and Today, we will, will hopefully show that there's, there's been uh, important um, progress that has been made since then. Uh, Chair, you recall in 2019 when we appeared, uh, it was about nine or 10 months into my term, um, having been appointed in February of 2019. And it's been a really tough road in the past three years in the NPA. Um, as as the, the Honorable Chair mentioned at the beginning, that you know the accountability function is to look at delays in, in, in various phases of, of investigations or prosecutions. But a point I want to make is that prior to 2019, it wasn't a case of delays, it was a case of no enrollments or very, very few enrollments of uh, cases that were not really significant in terms of the scale of the corruption that was going on um, in various spheres of government and the private sector. Um, in the past 10 years or so. So the NPA, in as much as um, we be not where we want to be in terms of the rebuilding and in terms of, of more cases in court, um, but we are certainly on course. Um, and our main focus in the next six months is certainly dealing with high level corruption in all spheres of government, as I said, and also um, in the private sector and, and including uh, state capture cases with the release of the Zondo Commission reports that is certainly a focus for the next six months um, is really looking at those high, high priority cases. Um, in the past year or so, the NPA is starting to get back into its stride. 
um, COVID seriously derail our rebuilding efforts. And um, while the courts couldn't operate, however, at full capacity, um, we could still say on our slide that deals with the introduction, um, whoever is managing the slides. Um, we could, yeah, we could just remain on this slide for now. Um, and, you know, we, we are, uh, during COVID, we certainly, um, you know, didn't halt our progress. You know, the courts were not able to operate at full capacity, which has affected various cases. Um, but certainly in this time, what we did is we used it to effectively build the, the NPA as an organization, aligning of our strategies, putting in place the foundations uh, for the next phase of, of action. Um, we really started on the back foot after years of state capture and, and widespread institutional destruction. But we've really you know, pulled ourselves up, we've, we've rolled up our sleeves, so to speak, and we've readied ourselves for, for the future or really for the fight for the future of our constitutional democracy, which as we note is being put under considerable strain. Um, so the NPA is really, um, you know, we've been playing catch up for the for, you know, the couple of years, but we are really now building to be a, a, a vehicle, um, you know, that is fit for purpose in terms of really upholding the rule of law. Um, I'm going to, there have been recent successes that demonstrate this, and, and I'm going to just um, at a very high level deal, deal with some of them. Um, um, you know, but before I, I mention some of these, perhaps we can just um, go through, um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, the NPA mandate, I'm not going to talk to this, uh, we're well aware of it, but it's, the, the presentation has been shared. Um, the AFU asset forfeiture unit and the SCCU mandates as well are clear. I'm not going to go into that. Next slide, please. Um, the AFU legal regime, as set out in the Prevention of Organized Crime Act, um, is a really important regime um, in our legislative framework. It's there, um, you know, chapter five and chapter six, one being forfeiture in terms of, uh, of uh, that is conviction based, that is chapter five and civil recovery in terms of chapter, chapter six, that is not conviction-based. Next slide. Next slide. Um, the legal framework on the SIU referrals, and I think um, this is important. Um, it, is, um, it is important to note that the, the SIU um, Act requires that the SIU um, when it collects evidence that points to the commission of an offense, uh, must then refer the matter to the NPA. That is what the SIU Act says. And that is, that is a challenge and, a, and a, uh, because you will note from the presentation of the, of the DPCI that um, matters are investigated by uh, the DPCI. And so, in as much as the SIU does really important work in terms of its own mandate, um, once it um, discovers evidence of, of that points to the commission of an offense, the act requires it to refer to the NPA. And, and, and that is a challenge because the NPA, um, very often the cases are not ready for criminal prosecutions. And so what the NPA does is, you will note from the presentation of the DPCI is that we refer these, well, we send these matters to the DPCI to make sure that they are investigated, that the criminal investigators investigate them, and we are then able to get the matters back from the DPCI and make decisions on these cases. This is really important because um, that, that this, this uh, really important process is understood um, because you will note that uh, from the SIU presentation, I think it was slide 57, that talked about NPA investigations. I think that was a mistake on the part of our SIU colleagues, because the NPA does not investigate these matters. And, and so it's, it's really important to understand that process. Um, so if we could, just dealing with a very high level overview of some of the matters uh, before we go into some of the detail. We could just stop at this slide, still part of my, my uh, introduction. Um, but Chair, just to mention that just yesterday, there were five government officials that appeared in the Mtata Specialized Commercial Crimes Court, and they um, 
they, it was with regard to the Alfred and Zo uh, municipality involving approximately 38 million rands. And the general may have mentioned this. Um, and so that was, that was an important matter that was brought to court just yesterday. We have also in the media um, been publishing um, the progress that is being made at the various, in the various provinces. It, we published on the Northwest uh, province as well as in the Free State. And there are some real, there are some uh, municipal matters that we've reported on um, with regard to crimes that are being committed um, in these in, in various municipalities across the country. I think General Labia's uh, presentation properly explained the extent of the work that is being done uh, with regard to cases in municipalities. Um, we've also in in when we appeared uh, before this committee in 2019. Um, there were a total of 25 cases before the courts involving municipalities. As of today, we have 66 cases in court uh, relating to municipal matters, which is a 164% increase in these matters. And, and it shows that even though we are not where we want to be, but as the general has also demonstrated, there is certainly a focus in terms of dealing with rampant corruption in our municipalities. Um, we've had some conviction in, in Zerast recently, in, in Kronstadt, with regard to certain municipalities. Um, we are a little bit disappointed with some of the sentences that are being meted out because they tend to be um, suspended sentences. Um, but there are some, and, and when Advocate de Kock does his um, presentation, he will um, show that there have been some significant uh, sentences like imprisonment of 10 years, etc. But we're finding that the number of sentences where a large proportion um, are suspended sentences. And in these two particular matters involving Kronstadt and, and Zerast, where sentences were just meted out uh, recently, uh, we are looking at whether we should appeal these sentences because they don't reflect the gravity of the crimes. And in order to be an effective deterrent, we have to ensure that the sentences actually uh, reflect the gravity of the crime. Um, there are municipal cases that are on the AC, that's the anti-corruption task team priority case list. Now, as you're aware, Chair, the ACTT deals with the, the most serious corruption cases. Um, there are currently 27 matters um, on the ACTT priority list. Um, 10 of them have been enrolled and involve large amounts. Um, it should also be noted that in the 2019 presentation, there were 17 matters on this list, and now there are 27. Um, just last week, uh, in one of the matters, I had to consider a, a racketeering authorization relating to offenses in a municipality. And to understand that when we charge with racketeering, it means that there are a number of people involved in this criminal enterprise and it also is indicative of the fact that there has been a, a pattern and that offenses have been committed repeatedly. And in this particular case where uh, a racketeering authorization was, was authorized last week, there was clear evidence of political interference in this matter to ensure that officials in the department did not face disciplinary proceedings. And, and that is a, a very, very serious issue. But I think that has been the challenge is that uh, disciplinary matters, you know, need to move much first, uh, faster. As, as Advocate uh, uh, Motibi has said, you know, they refer many matters for, for disciplinary matters as well. And so the role of the municipalities in terms of dealing with these issues is really, really important. Chair, I'm going to leave it um, at that for now. I'm going to hand over to, to Advocate de Kock, who will take us through the progress on the cases. As I said, we have sent a much longer report and so we will deal with the highlights only. Thank you, Chair. Advocate de Kock, are you ready? So thank you uh, very much. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning, Honorable Members of the Committee, and all the other colleagues uh, who are of law enforcement who are present on the platform. Um, in fact, the report the NDPP refers to is 151 pages, and that contains a lot of the detail as requested by the, by the committee. 
our report, and we'll try and keep it to the 20 minutes, is just a summary of, of that information. Um, the detail will have to be found in the report that has been submitted uh, to the committee. <clears throat> so if I can move as far as the progress slides are concerned, uh, the first slide would relate to uh, what we call the SIU referrals. These are the matters uh, that the SIU uh, spoke about um, in, its, uh, uh, in, in, in some of its slides, where it says criminal matters referred to the MPA. And uh, just, just as the NDPP indicated to bear in mind that these matters are then referred to the DPCI for investigation. Currently 70 in the current financial year 2022, uh, according to the information in the possession of the MPA, uh, 70 um, under investigation, six matters uh, before the court. Uh, uh, one matter has been finalized in court five uh, referrals uh, were declined. Uh, declined mean uh, we decided not to prosecute. Uh, DPCI uh, registered dockets assigned to investigating officers, one. Number of referrals with prosecutors for case planning, 12. Uh, and, and two matters were referred back to the SIU for, uh, for clarification. So in total, uh, 97 matters currently according again, once again, to the records. I just want to pause there to say that you will note there may be a discrepancy or perceived discrepancy between the information the DPCI presents and the information the MPA presents and the information the, um, the SIU presents. It's simply because uh, we deal with the matters differently and we record the matters differently. Um, and, so, and so that is why uh, there is this discrepancy. Our approach is going to be going forward that we want a closer uh, consolidation of this. And we are working hard with our operational people to try and ensure that there's a, a closer link between the referrals, the matters referred to investigation, and then actually the link to the courts. But hopefully at the next presentation, we can come more with a kind of consolidated information uh, to the committee. If we can move to the next slide. So, uh, so members of the committee, um, this is just a pie chart that indicates uh, exactly what I've just uh, presented now. Um, so the referrals contain a small portion of criminal cases in investigated within the local government sphere. On all local government matters, SAPs have in excess of 250 cases. Now, let me stop there. Uh, that was our original information that we had in our records. Subsequently, the DPCI presentation now indicates 219. So that will be the correct uh, figure um, since they have then over the last few days looked very carefully at what they currently got on the books and they come to 219. So that figure must just be amended to read uh, 219. Um, and then we say the MPA has more than 50 cases in court comprising 100 accused. Now that is a significant number of people before the courts currently um, in relation to local government matters. What this demonstrates is that serious action is being taken as we speak, because this is our current scenario. And um, quite clearly people are being brought to the court roles. As the NDPP indicated earlier, uh, we are going to ramp up over the next six months um, our ability to bring these matters faster to court. So as we work closer with the, with the investigating officers of the DPCI and we focus on, uh, on the corruption work more uh, closely, more of these accused are going to be in the courts over the next six months. And currently they translate to 50 cases. Um, the permutations that we speak about is just to indicate, and I'm not going to go through all the detail, it's just to indicate some of the challenges that we have in terms of uh, the referral, once a matter is investigated, um, the different aspects to an investigation flowing from one referral. So I will ask the committee members to perhaps go through slides 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
uh, and 19 up to 20. Uh, those slides, if we can just stop at 20, those slides are just for information purposes that gives examples of the proclamation that is issued by the SIU and the different ways in which a case eventually uh, gets dealt with and what happens when a matter has to go to court. So I'm not going to go through all the detail, um, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I will take that those slides will be read by the committee. If we move to uh, the following slide, uh, these are the matters uh, that have been consolidated under the interministerial task team um, uh, relating to the Northwest. And it then speaks to uh, cases involving uh, the municipalities. So as we speak, uh, the total number of cases are 51. The total number of matters in court are 17. There are currently two matters with the MPA um, for decision and for guidance. So depending on the queries that the prosecutors may write in those matters, either the matter will, uh, a decision will be made to prosecute or there may be one or two aspects of the investigation that must still be uh, uh, completed. Under investigation are 19 and the total finalized um, is 13. So total amounts involved in all of these matters uh, in the Northwest is 2.3 uh, billion uh, rand. The next slide would then speak to uh, diffusion center matters. Um, and uh, as you can see, relating to municipalities, 21 uh, cases, there are three cases currently in court, and there are nine matters under investigation, and nine matters have already been finalized uh, by, the, by the prosecution. Um, earlier, the general referred to the, to the VBS um, bank matter. Uh, so, as far as the VBS investigation is concerned, the phase in which we are currently involves at least 20 municipalities. And of those, six um, are already in, in the court. Of course, as we finalize each individual investigation relating to the, the actual municipality, the, the implicated individuals in those municipalities will be brought to court. Um, the broader case of the BBS um, is currently in, in court um, and the trial date for that case has been set down for the 3rd of October, uh, 2022. Um, and then as I've indicated, there are matters of municipalities already in court. The Collins Chobani municipality matter is set down for the 9th to the 20th of May, 2022. Uh, the West Rand Morofong municipality, uh, this case is set down for the 10th of June uh, for the defense to, this, to, to study the, uh, the evidence that was presented to them. And then there's also the Mafeking Municipality Northwest. Uh, this case is on the roll for the 5th of April, 2022. So VBS is a very important investigation. And, and the simple point that I'm making is that the cases are now being enrolled and we will see more enrollments of these matters as, each, as the work in each of these respective municipalities and the involvement in the referral of municipal funds um, to the VBS bank, um, and that evidence is, 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 is finalized. If we can move to the next slide, please. Um, so, uh, committee members, I would just briefly take us through some of the very good work that prosecutors have, have done, prosecutors and investigators have done in terms of municipal matters. This, of course, is work in progress. As I've indicated, there's currently 55 cases on the court rolls at various stages. So 
Some of them are just enrolled. Some of them are partly heard matters where cases evidence has been led. Some of them may be for judgment. And some of them, of course, may be for sentence. So of the cases that we have finalized, uh, we're going to deal with some of those matters quickly. Uh, you will see uh, uh, members of the committee. Uh, the first matter we put up is the Chwani Metropolitan matter, the state versus Jacobus Barand Lerum. Um, this matter uh, was finalized uh, and the accused was uh, given an effective term of 10 years imprisonment um, for, for these contraventions. They accused the former employee of Chwani Municipal uh, Supply Chain Management Regulations, causing the city a loss of more than 50 million. A 2010 report by the city scoper found that Lerum flouted the supply chain management policy by creating orders and procuring quotes for services directly from suppliers instead of going through the procurement system. He then split up the orders into small amounts to stay under the radio, radar of the 3,000 cap. So that's the detail. That's the sentence. And, and this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that all municipal officials, no matter how senior they are, where the evidence clearly indicates the uh, uh, commission of an offense will be brought to court and upon conviction with these kinds of offenses will certainly face a, a long term of, of imprisonment. If we can move to the next one. Um, in this matter, and I'm not going to read through all the detail uh, uh, members of the committee, in this matter, the, the commission of the offenses related to fraud and money laundering involving an amount of seven and a half million rand. The accused uh, were convicted um, and a sentence of 12 years direct imprisonment. Interestingly, uh, both Chula and Lelela were employees of Cocter um, of this department. Um, and the two of them were in a, in a romantic uh, relationship with, the, with, the other, with each other. Uh, an effective term of 12 years imprisonment for those for the fraud that was committed in that instance. Uh, the next matter is State versus Chule. Again, um, uh, 7.5 million meant to be paid from Cocter to the Ingwe municipality for the construction of a creche or community center um, was diverted into, into Dladley's bank account. Uh, in this instance, upon conviction, uh, the accused uh, was sentenced to an effective term of 15 years direct imprisonment. So again, we can see the trend, uh, very serious uh, sentences are in fact being meted out by the court. Uh, on slide 27, uh, this related to a counselor taking money from members of the public uh, on the pretense of awarding RDP houses, an amount of 7,000 was involved. Uh, he was convicted and sentenced on, on a charge of fraud, um, sentenced to an effective term of six years imprisonment. Uh, the uh, leave to appeal application was refused and an effective term of six years. So again, it demonstrates when you are a senior official, when you are a public official, like a counselor, and you commit, no matter how small the amount, you will be prosecuted. Upon conviction, this is the type of sentence that is going to be imposed. So I think in some sense, we want to send out a very strong warning that um, to anyone who's going to think, even consider committing these kinds of offenses, the courts are going to in, uh, impose very severe sentences upon conviction. Of course, those who have already committed these offenses that are under investigation, um, that warning also applies, but unfortunately there's nothing they can do about that warning now because they've already done it. But the long arm of the law will certainly catch up to them. If we can move to the next uh, slide. State versus Peterson. This was a matter in the Outsourcen municipality. Um, my, my recollection when I was the DPP of the Western Cape, uh, this matter was, was, was finalized. Uh, you may have been the municipal manager. Um, a sentence of five years imprisonment was imposed 
in relation to his contraventions in terms of the Municipal Finance Management Act. So again, Municipal managers are being convicted. Municipal managers are being charged in terms of the Municipal Finance Management Act as well. The next, uh, the next one, uh, State versus Fritz Malcolm. Uh, this matter involves a city ombud official who accepted a 1,200 Rand bribe to arrange for the purchase of a house. Again, let's see the sentence, four years direct imprisonment. Um, he, was, he was convicted of corruption. We can move on. State versus Nombimba, Viba. Um, the accused, uh, also a councillor in the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality, inflated a request for funding submitted by an NGO and insisted the NGO withdraw the money that uh, they received and hand the cash to him. Um, he, he was convicted um, also in terms of poker, money laundering, and he was received a sentence of five years imprisonment. Um, and there was also an order for repayment of 20,000 Rand to the Nelson Mandela Bay um, um, Metro Municipality. We can move to the next one. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. But, but we can clearly see the trend um, in respect of all of these outcome, uh, out, uh, these cases. And um, in the majority of them, we are seeing direct imprisonment. So on slide, um, on the next slide, it's 10 years. Uh, the following slide, six years. Um, there is a slide, 10 years imprisonment suspended for five years. In this instance, correction or supervision was imposed. Um, and then um, on the last slide, well, not the last slide, on slide 34, um, there is a, a sentence. Uh, there was a, a matter that was finalized, uh, but uh, it was an acquittal in relation to that matter. If we can move to the next one. The Burger of a Municipality, uh, the accused was sentenced to, uh, on counts one to 10, 12 years imprisonment, uh, of which four years were suspended, suspended and counts 11, five years imprisonment. If we can move to the next one. Uh, nine years uh, imprisonment, three years suspended. The next one, six years imprisonment suspended. And of course, where, as the NDPP indicated, where the prosecution is of the view that the sentence is inappropriate, we will certainly uh, appeal, uh, take those matters on appeal um, as required. So if we can move to the next one. And we can also skip that. So uh, I'd just like to come to the uh, to the summary slide before I, I, I hand over to my colleague, NDPP uh, Advocate Rabaji, and the Special Director of the AFU. Uh, in summary, um, this is the current uh, situation of matters uh, on the books uh, of the NPA. SIU referrals of municipalities, there are 97 open matters. All municipality cases on the ACTT uh, priority list. These are the much more serious investigations, the bigger investigations, um, the BBS, etc. Those kinds of investigations. There are 27 of those. The fusion center cases in respect of municipalities. There are 21 of those. The municipal cases in the SECU courts currently. Those are the partly heard matters or matters we accused are still required to plead. They, they, those matters are 59. And then uh, convicted municipal, municipal cases. Those are the ones I just briefly flagged some of the outcomes. There are 30 of those matters. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. So NDPP, that is from, uh, from our side, just a snapshot. And just to remind the members of the committee, a lot of this detail is sitting in the reports that we provided to the committee. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Advocate Cock. Um, Advocate Rabaji to deal with the asset forfeiture unit matters, Chair.
Um, thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity, and um, thank you to the honorable members as well. If we could go to um, the next slide, slide 42. Just um, uh, as an introduction, introduction, Chairperson and members, um, we have right at the beginning of the slide where the NTPP dealt with the introduction, explained how the asset for future regime works. Um, there's a chapter five and a chapter six proceedings. Uh, chapter six being where there's no criminal conviction and investigation, meaning the case doesn't have to go through NPS. And then there's chapter five where there's criminal investigation and then prosecution. And then of course it goes um, through our colleagues in NPS and the process is long. So if we look at slide 42, um, this is a slide that summarizes what is in the AFU space. In total, we have 41 matters, municipal cases, uh, with the value of 581 million. In that 581 million, there's still seven additional cases that still needed to be added to those that are not yet finalized. So that's the purpose of uh, slide 42. It's to give you a sense of what is the total number of the cases. And when we move to slide 43, this is where we deal with asset for future SIU referral list. And there we explain that AFU has got three matters under restraint, which is chapter five, where the case still has to be prosecuted. And we've got one preservation matter and one confiscation matter. Uh, next slide. Uh, slide 44, this is where we explain that since inception, this slide deals with all the cases that AFU has dealt with in the 19 years of its existence. So the value of orders is 758 million, number of orders 115, and this is a total, total number of the cases we have. And below that, I give a um, breakdown of confiscation and forfeiture orders, as well as the recoveries, meaning money that has been, been deposited into the criminal asset recovery account, because in some matters, um, the money is paid back to the victim cases. And then the next three slides, we give a breakdown of, of those matters. How many are corruption cases, which is slide 45, the values and the breakdown of the orders. And then um, in slide 46, how many of those matters are fraud cases? And then in slide 47, how many of those are theft cases? Then in slide 48, we deal with COVID cases. And um, my colleague, Advocate de Kock, has dealt with those which are being handled through the ACTT in the Fusion Center. And most of the cases in the Fusion Center, the recoveries are done by um, SIU themselves through the rules. Um, slide 49 gives a breakdown of, um, of the COVID cases that are in the AFU space. And on slide 50, I conclude uh, again by emphasizing that through the two regimes that the AFU uses um, to, 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 to proceed with recoveries, when um, it's, it's, it's a matter that still has to be prosecuted. The AFU process is halted until the criminal trial is concluded, and then we start a confiscation inquiry process. So this takes time. And by that time, um, the assets have been dissipated. So you can see that relatively to the rest of the work that AFU does, these are very small figures. Um, and then the last point I wanted to make is that um, our recovery process is through the civil standard of proof. And um, 
Advocate Ducock mentioned that um, for, 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 for the matters that we have to do in AFU where criminal proceedings um, are continuing, we have to wait first for cases to be proven beyond reasonable doubt before we can apply the civil standard of proof. So I, I hope honorable members, uh, the long presentation that we have given has given you a sense of um, how the AFU process and even the, the opening remarks by the NDPP and how then you should look at, at, at the figures that you have in this brief summary of the presentation. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Um, just in closing, some quick observations, um, Chair, is that um, it, uh, what, what we found is that, and as, as Advocate Motibi also uh, remarked, that the, the crimes related to local government matters often, often relate to very similar trends or crimes. And, and it's really important that these loopholes are closed within the municipalities themselves. The, the, offen the offenses often include um, you know, fake accounts that are, that are opened and then monies are paid into, into these accounts, uh, service providers, details are changed. Um, and accused uh, deposit money into these fake accounts. Or we have the issue where service providers claim money for services um, that are provided and, and they are paid. And then it is often established afterwards that either very little work has been done or no work at all. Um, there's very, the, the levels of oversight into the flow of money within municipal, municipal accounts, uh, there's not proper and regular oversight that's done. And it's, it's, it's often we found that it's until an accounting firm or the auditor general uh, that does uh, investigations that mismanagement and abuse, uh, misappropriation, uh, malpractices are actually uh, discovered. And uh, so, you know, we, we also, of course, as Advocate Motivi said, you know, the whole process with regard to awarding of tenders uh, within supply chain management um, and Chair, the, 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 the impact that, that this has on, on services being delivered to, to the country is huge. And we, at the end of the day, as law enforcement, are the ones that need to carry the can, are being held to account correctly so, in terms of what we're doing reactively at considerable resources, utilizing considerable precious resources of the criminal justice uh, law enforcement sector in order to address, address failings that if one dealt with upstream in the municipal space, we wouldn't be having these, these challenges downstream. So it's really important and I want to emphasize, I mean, we have service delivery protests across the country. And the reason for that is lack of service del delivery at the local level. So, and then again, even when those protests happen, the can sits with the, with the law enforcement entities. So the, the, I really want to emphasize the importance of ensuring that the proactive measures in municipalities are really strengthened to ensure that downstream we don't have these problems and we don't have to address these matters by way of the criminal justice system. Um, thank you very much, Chair. That is the presentation of the NPA. Uh, thank you very much uh, to all the presenters. And uh, I hope members have been taking notes and uh, I'm sure as well, uh, you are talking to uh, members of parliament who are all over the country in terms of their constituencies and reacting and, and mixing with communities. Uh, we'll now allow members, I think they have been taking notes, to raise hands and uh, ask questions, comments. Uh, I see Honorable Kalipi is number one. Honorable Kaba is number two. Honorable Spice number three. Honorable Matumba number four. Can we take your hands in that order? And I think we'll take the, those others that follow. Honorable Kaisa and Honorable Booms. Honorable Kalipi. 
Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, please forgive me. I'm on the road. I might have some network problems. But Chair, let me just welcome the presentation from all three presenters. Um, I think I concur with you, Chairperson, on your opening remarks when you emphasize the point that our interest here in this committee is to ensure that they service delivery. And one of the main, main, main challenges, main problems that hinder the service delivery is corruption. So we have a huge interest in terms of how our law enforcement agencies are dealing with corruption. Having said that, Chair, I just want to raise my concern on two presentations, uh, which is from Hox uh, and also from NPA. Uh, I think, Chair, as a committee members, who are supposed to have full information as we requested updates in this regard. We did that because we want to go and also explain to the people on the ground as we are representing them here. So the presentation from Hawks is just in numbers. It lacks details. Although when Dr. Lebenya, General Lebenya was doing the presentation with his team, he touched on some of the details, but it does not help us because when they finish with the presentation, we won't have the information that is necessary in order for us to go and communicate to our people who, whom we are representing here. Same goes to the NPA. Nevertheless, Chair, there's only one case which also I think is have attracted a, um, an interest from the public is the case that uh, the Hawks uh, have made in, as, a, as an example here of former mayor of Eteguini and her co-accused and councillors. So now, uh, even on their presentation, they also alluded to the fact that Eteguini is also having so many cases such as 13 cases, if I'm not mistaken. But since we lack details, it can't help the committee to understand which are those cases because they just make one example with that one of Eteguini. So therefore, with your permission, Chair, we'll ask to be given some details from the Hawks site and from the NPA. When uh, the Director of National Prosecution uh, was uh, suggesting earlier on to say that uh, the sequence of the presentation, we thought that they are going to follow exactly what the SIU was presenting. Because at least on the SIU, there's some sense of detail that were provided in the committee. But nevertheless, Chair, I think that after this meeting or towards the end of this meeting, the chairperson will, will give guidance in terms of how to obtain their information. As I said before, this is very, very, very important in terms of details of, uh, of the information, especially of cases of dealing with corruption. Chair, I just want to comment uh, by saying that we note the cases uh, that were presented in details by the SIU. And what is also my observation is that some of the people who have been taken up to task are only the officials of the municipalities. Uh, it's only rare, it's one or two, whereby there is a politician uh, in a form of a councillor, whereby they are mentioned in one or two. So I just want to get uh, some sense of clarity if in all cases that have landed in their shores, there is no politician that has been uh, linked, except, of course, the former mayor of Etequin. But I'm saying this because it's, it's, I just noticed in all presentation that people who have been found uh, in a wrongdoing of the law are only officials who happen to work at municipality level. And then the second one, Chair, uh, in that one is that uh, the, the, the Etequini matter. One of the reasons why this matter that was also made as an example here by General Lebenya uh, is taking too long. Each time we get an update from the media, they always state that the NPA is not ready. The NPA is not ready with the case. So therefore, I just want to 
ask from the N NPA side, uh, how long does it take them uh, to be ready for the case to, 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 to continue in the court of law? Because I think I'm sharing with uh, many South Africans when there's a case of public interest and then all eyes are there in that case, especially to deal with corruption, only to learn from the media that no, the case has been postponed due to the fact that uh, Umbuso or the state is not ready. So that is the case in point of Etequin, which involves so many former councillors and councillors. And some of these people who are also attending this case, who are charged, are also members of the legislature. They are also playing a very much a role in terms of uh, representing people of South Africa. So I just want to get that clear. So coming back to the SIU, I just have some few questions with SIU. Thanks very much for the detailed report. So uh, in some of the cases uh, you also share with us with this committee, uh, we understand very well that your hands are very tight. You just do the investigation as the SIU. And when it comes to conclusion of the case, because you have to send the case uh, to, to other sectors like the SAC, SAPS or to the Hawks or to the NPA. So now I just want to uh, ask the SIU if you don't think it's proper for you to amend the SIU Act because we don't have powers. There's a gap between yourself and uh, the, the processes of the cases. Once you have done your part, uh, the case is out of your, your way. So therefore, I think we have this kind of a challenge as well. When the Auditor General didn't have powers until they came to conclusion to amend uh, the audit, uh, uh, there is a, an amendment now in terms of the Audit General. So therefore, I'm asking as well, in order for you, for this good work, for this trying, you are trying very much hard to do your work. But once you are done, there's nothing that you, more that you can do. So I want to get that clarity. And then you are mentioning on your presentation, SIU, by saying that you also have submitted an annual report to the president. But I have also some question, a very specific question. This committee have dealt with this matter. Uh, there was a matter that was concerning the 73 million uh, by Mpapuli consultants. And this matter came here in this committee. And the SIU issued summons in October 2017. We are in 2022 now. And then this matter is not included even in this report, even in the report that you submitted to the president, which is an annual report. So now I just want to understand when will this matter be concluded? It's almost is almost four, four years now. So there, there, is there any reason why this litigation under proclamation R52 of 2014 for this 73, 73 million not listed in your annual report, as I stated before? And then if we can be clarified on that one, because we don't want to speculate. We don't want to speculate with what is happening because we also as a committee wanted the municipality to come and account a uh, regard to this matter. And then what also have been cleared is that uh, the mayor uh, who is, uh, who was, a, I don't know if he's still the mayor or is a former mayor because we dealt with this matter uh, from the, before the 20, before the 1st of November. So I wanted to check if the SIU is aware that the mayor who reported this subsequently stepped down or as a mayor in December 2018. So therefore, the findings by the SIU against the mayor and the municipal manager are there or are not part of this particular case. So if you can be clarified on this one so we can understand when you work, how does you process your cases and how do, how do you also uh, close up your cases? Thank you very much, Chair. Those are the few questions that I have. Uh, for now. Thanks, Chen. Uh, Honorable Baba. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you allow me to not open my, my skin, my what, my camera, because I, where I am. Okay. I have a no, no, no. But okay. uh, thank you, thank you. Chairperson, let me welcome the, the presentation. All three presentations from the 
SIU Hawks and NDPP. Chebesini, uh, I, 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 I agree what they are saying, but what I'm not agreeing with them is that when they are doing corruption, when they are doing investigation in the corruption, they are too selective, Che. I'm saying that Chepesin uh, because in Houghton, in Houghton where I'm residing, there was an investigation, Che, in the Department of Education with the amount of 429 or 430. Um, I not remember, I need to be corrected if I'm wrong. That case, they were reporting here, Che, on the TV, saying they set aside. Chairperson, I want to ask them what is happening in this uh, institution. I want to, my question is that, what is happening in this institution? They are dealing with corruption or they are dealing with people. I'm saying this because we cannot set aside the 400 million and who gag. We cannot set aside the 400 million case, cases, but uh, uh, intended to, 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 to put people in jail with the uh, 200 million. Which, means we, we, which, which amount is bigger than 400 and something and, and 200 and something? They must tell us, are they obtained or they, are they in, in politics when they are doing things? The way they are doing things, the people on the ground, they are saying they are not doing any justice. Why they are saying that? Because corruption, you cannot hide it. Corruption, it appears on TV, every board can see. Even us as members of parliament, as, as, as representative of parliament. I think I can say, Chair, the corona things, it helps us in, in other ways because it gives us the time to, to stay at home and work at home so that we can see everything what is happening on TV. We cannot. We cannot listen to the people come and present it as, but when they are going out, they are doing some, something else. Uh, I'm saying this personally because all cases we know, but when they are doing arrest or, or investigate, they are too selective and investigating. I don't know whether these people, they are, they are in some faction, in some certain organization. Because the way they are working, they are not doing any justice to us. Chairperson, I'm asking this. In Muhalakwena, in Limbombo, a BCM in Eastern Cape, a Tegwin Metro in KZN, people were arrested there, but in under some municipalities, no one is arrested. Why? Why they are not arresting everybody? You see, I was hearing, I don't know which general was saying, they will arrest even a councillor. There is no small um, cases. I agree with that. If they will be not selecting, the problem that we have with, with this institution, they, they are too selective. I thought that they must be neutral enough because they are the institution, they are not politicians. Myself, I cannot be neutral because I'm a politician, but then they must be neutral enough than me. But myself, I'm trying to be neutral because as I'm speaking here, yeah, I'm speaking as a public representative, I'm representing in a, every port in South Africa in the country. But then the way the action that they are taking, they are saying they are investigating corruption. But when you see they are investigation, they are investigating people, not corruption. They must, they must stop to doing that. People are seeing them. One day people they go to the street and march for them. What they are doing is not correct, it's not assisting in South Africa. Actually, is making mess in South Africa, there must be a neutral institution. And a chair, 
you see in the issue of uh mo sukalikwa in in pumalang hey in musukalikwa in pumalang chair when i'm going to at home case at end i'm passing in sukalikwa every time and again in sukalika roads are not finished bridges are not finished potholes is too much in what called in 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 in, in standard team did they investigate this municipality? If they did investigate, what did they get? Did they ask where is the contractor that, that was given this work to do? I think it's six years, if it's not 10 years. These bridges, they are not finished. Their investigation, it must be to the things that are happening within the community and that they must Come can tell us about what did they get when they're investigating that thing, those things. I can tell DPP, the DPP, the NDPP was uh, appointed uh, in 2019, Chair. I agree with that. But uh, my question is that, is the, are we gonna see a transpi transparent report in the state capture in their jurisdiction now if no no why not because we want to see a transparent report because we know who was appearing in the state capture we want to see all of them because they were implicated with a serious corruption the implication must not even be picked up the implication must not be pick and choose, sorry. The pick and choose of implication, it will cost us in this country. The NDPP must know that. It must understand when the state capture came, they must read that state capture report and if they satisfied, yes, they must, it must be up, uh, uh, outside uh, in the public. But if it's not, they must question. Because people, they will question them. Because they will, they will rush to arrest people and why the others, they are not arrested, but they were implicated in the state capture on TV. They must understand that. Um, also, Chair, uh, there is an issue of oversight, Chair. I, wa I want to ask, to the Hawks and to three of them, I want to ask about the issue of oversight arresting people. Uh, is the only premier in South Africa, the former premier of a uh, free state who was not doing any oversight in his, in his uh, uh, tenure? When was a premier in free state? What about Houghton province? Why they are they dealing with the issues of uh, Houghton province? What is happening? Who sent who sent them to whom? And that is why I'm saying these people they, they, they must investigate. We are not turning any blind eye to see what is happening in this country. What what is happening in any province? I'm asking to say. What happened in Houghton? Why the oversight recently, a 420 or 430, they are saying it must be recouped, it must be set aside. They are too soft when it comes here in Houghton. Why? They must tell us why. I'm asking why. Because the corruption is corruption. No matter if it has been done with your friend or it has been done with your cousin, but it is a corruption. You must investigate and arrest people. Uh, this issue of set aside and recoup, I don't think, it, that's why I'm saying there is no justice in this uh, investigation, because I don't think you can arrest and recoup and set aside. Well, I don't, I, I don't know. 
Why, why they are doing this in our people? They are dividing the country. If you're arresting, arrest everybody. If you're recouping, you must recoup in everybody. It must be standardized, your job. It must be standard, your job. And uh, if you are set aside, you must set aside. Because the issue 400 and something million is a big issue. But you turn it as if a small and an issue. We must not do that. We want to see you work doing your, your job with a transparency and being neutral enough to our, to our people. Also, uh, Chepesi, I'm glad when uh, General Mutum was saying they will be improving their system. I want to know, my question is that Chepesi, I want to know what type of improving? They improve to do not select arresting or they will improving to, to maybe go and arrest those who are capable in politics, those who are powerful in politics. No, they must not do that. I'm asking what type of improving they must tell us. I'm, they must be clear of this improving. They will improve to not being selective or because they are too selective. All they, to, they will improve to arrest everybody, not to select those who are powerful in politics, those who are powerful in doing their work. I want to know, I want to hear about this improving. Because I, 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 my, 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 the problem that you are sitting on the ground, you are having, having many questions. To the, uh, to the people on, on the ground, asking us, what are you doing in parliament if this institution, they are doing these things in front of you? Because you cannot turn a blind eye to the big question, to the big corruption and rush to the small and cor corruption. What are you doing? What, are you, what, what is a, a, in, a local, in, a message are you sending to the people of South Africa? Because people of South Africa, they, they can see, they can read, they can analyze. The main thing that you've forgotten, people of South Africa, they are too much educated now. They can analyze thoroughly and come with a conclusion. I'm saying, Chair, this chairperson, because I'm here in Ivory Park, where people, they can ask me when I'm going on the ground and doing my... A, 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 a job as a public representative. They ask me this question, people. Even myself, I'm asking them so that they'll go back and, and, and answer what, why they are too selective. They must tell us. And the improvement, what type of improvement they will be doing. I can understand that they said they are arresting uh, those who are professional or whatever. No, corruption is corruption. If this can be done by 18 years, child is corruption. Do the, the work and uh, arrest for, uh, corrupt people. Why they are putting so much uh, in the honor, effort? Honor, honor, uh, in, honor, in conclusion, in, in yes, conclusion, in conclusion, Chairperson, I want to ask the uh, uh, ADPP, NDPP. The NDPP said they will be, the, there was a person who was sentenced 10 years, but they wanted to re, what's called? They wanted to be reappeared, reappeal that sentence because it was too small and uh, the six years and the five years. Why did Chepesin we have many people who are doing more corruption, but they are not even appearing to any court as we speak? Why they are putting more, more effort to the people who, are, who have been sentenced than those who are not even appearing in any court as we speak today? Thank you, Chair. They must tell us. I want the clarity on that. 
Thank you. Um, uh, honorable members, why I'm interrupting uh, Honorable Kava is just repetition. I think if we carry out the message, uh, we must move to the next point. Uh, Honorable Spice. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, thank you, um, Chairperson. Thank you for the um, presentations by the different um, entities. Um, mine will be short and to the point, Chairperson. Chairperson, the first, uh, <clears throat> I think the one thing that has stuck with me is that when Advocate Batoi was saying that um, they've been playing catching up, and as much as I understand that they had a lot to deal with, one uh, obviously um, looks at um, when um, the advocate started in this entity and where we are now. And I'm appreciative of the work that has been done. So I'm just um, referring to page 12 on the NPA's presentation. Um, and I look at in 2019 that they had three out of 63 investigate, uh, cases investigated before court and one finalized. And then I see in 2022, you have six out of the 70 investigations in court and only three finalized. So now, Chairperson, on any standard or metric, that is not so great. And I think in order for us to assist, and that's, I think, what our role is also, not to just criticize and find fault, is that one needs to look probably at the, possibly at the NPA and COPTA possibly uh, within our powers that we might have and not have um, to consult with the new chief justice on the prioritization of cases and backlog in particular. And then I also think chairperson for us, we need to look at that is that we as COPTA need to look at a possible solution for us to possibly pass legislation um, that would allow for municipalities and civil organizations and so on, for instance, to pursue private prosecutions after an allotted time. We, for instance, have the private prosecutions bill, um, Chairperson. And um, it would be interesting for me to get a list of prosecutable cases that cannot um, be done by our law enforcement entities. And once we get that sense, it would be maybe easy for us to look at other areas like getting private legal firms um, that deals with some of the cases that, 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 that our entities cannot get to. Um, and then Chairperson, my other one was on the SIU and it's a comment consideration of a comment that was made in terms of that SIU reports get to municipalities, but that councils sit on it. And from our side, Chairperson, I think that and we must also make a note that we from our side as COPTA need uh, to assist these law enforcement uh, entities by possibly uh, putting mechanisms in place to ensure that those accountable, the political champions and the political leadership in the names of the executive mayor and his executive need to make sure that they give effect to the SIU reports that are, that are received um, and that they don't sit on it for time, for, for endless times and sometimes even play politics with it. And I think that is um, incumbent on us as COCTA to see if we could possibly um, assist in, that, in, in putting in place those mechanisms. But for now, uh, Chairperson, I would like to say, it is good to see that there are some movement. It's good to see that um, you know, there are cases being um, prosecuted and people are actually uh, being um, arrested. The other thing that I want to say is that I have also listened to cases where people have been um, convicted, but some of it dates back very long, uh, you know, back to when um, it does, uh, you know, it dates back past the date of the of the of the leadership in these entities now. And I don't necessarily because some of those already served their sentences, so it cannot really be put on the clock of the current leadership um, within the NPA because it dates back. Um, long and it's specific cases that I would not like to highlight now, but thank you for that. It's good to see that this is what is happening and we are moving forward. Uh, and I would concur with my colleague, Honorable Mkalipi, 
um, that we also get more detail on some of, of, of the matters that would give us a, but a much better reflection of what is happening. I thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Kaiza. Honorable Kaiza. Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, uh, for the opportunity, I'm going to be. I want to be trying to be very, very pointed, Chairperson. Uh, my issues relate to the issues that I don't see in the presentation at all. It's issues of section uh, section 106 reports uh, that uh, Chairperson, you got. Uh, let me start from the very last case that I've got going uh, that way. That way will make things much more uh, faster. You know, uh, I do not see a Msugaligwa here in Bumala in the reports of the, of the law enforcement institutions. Uh, there is a lot of corruption uh, in, in and threats and intimidations uh, that are leveled against officials, particularly the, offici the, 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 the female officials uh, since 2012, Chairperson. And I do not know because community is quite scared there of one person or two for a very long time now. Uh, it, it's too much, it has come uh, to a to 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 the to the very end, Chairperson. That uh, if we do not talk about these things, people will keep disappearing. A municipal manager uh, is forced to resign around 2013 in in ML, uh, by the name of Tandi Lihuat, and then a C of a CFO of Musugali in 2013, Chair, and then. Threats and intimidation are such that uh, where even when he go, she goes to the CCMA, when the commissioner comes back, uh, she tells her that you've lost the case because before you even hear the case, and you wonder what is going on. Who is influencing these officials at the CCMA? Uh, who is funding them not to not to process case, cases? What is the is the SIU doing about that? Why is that not, not part of the investigations that are happening there? And then, and then you've got a situation that was reported to the public protector. I don't see it here, Chairperson. Section one, 106 uh, uh, of, the, of the Municipal Systems Act. The, 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 in Dr. J.S. Murok, there is corruption there that, that we report. They even came here in the committee in 2019. I'll read the, the headings, Chairperson, just the headings. Uh, you've got a situation there where a mayor is abusing the mayoral vehicles. We're not hearing that here in, in, the, in the institutions. And then you've got a situation where a certain service provider was paid 10 million instead of 1 million. And then you've got corruption around construction of the fresh produce market. We even went there as, the, as, 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 as members of parliament, went twice even to, 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 check the, to check the situation there. And then you've got the speaker who is uh, alleged to use using municipal property and services uh, that, is, that is paid by the, that are paid by the municipality. And then you've got the a speaker again rigged, who rigs the results and the voting process. And then the council sitting, not, not sitting properly. The, municipal the municipality invests in VPS. How far is that, that invest, investigation? And what is the outcome? And the other thing, Chairperson, that we have here is, 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 is the issue of the turnaround uh, time of this, is, it seems that it's very, very product, protracted. It seems that this system is meant to frustrate people. When you, you don't even go, go to court, you take a very long time being remanded and remanded until the case disappears based on 
who is God, who, who has got, it's almost like those people there in the court, they are looking for someone who's got money to buy those cases as if they are not getting paid. I do not know why do they have to be that productive. Maybe uh, the, the, the SIU Hawks and, and everyone who is here can just clarify what causes that protracted process to then uh, 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 obtain in terms of uh, 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 completing the cases because this is what is frustrating people. I'm giving you an example of just one person who goes to court and being remanded all the time up until the case uh, is thrown out of court. Uh, and then in that municipality, you've got po political interference and then and, and so on and the service providers that are irregularly appointed and so forth. This was reported to to the public protest. There's a, there's a clear report that we have uh, uh, received in, in that regard. And then I do not also, I, I also do not see Chepesin. The uh, section 106 of Emalashen uh, in terms of the status of investigation here in Pumala, uh, where the former mayor uh, increased upper limits for some section 56 managers and the municipal manager without a council resolution. Then you've got a situation where people are called to then uh, 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 say that I was present in that, in that meeting. And then we don't see those things coming out here uh, in, in terms of that. Is the Mpumalanga uh, 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 province submitting the cases to the law enforcement agencies in Castage, in, in total, in totality? If, are they doing that? Are they doing that? If they are not, what is to be done about provinces, metros, and, and districts and local municipalities that are not complying uh, in terms of, in, in terms of uh, cooperating with the law enforcement agencies? Because there should be consequence management, Chair, when a, when a municipality does not uh, comply at all. And then you move to, to nice that there. You've got a, a municipal manager who just resigned for the second time in, 20, in, in October 2020, following two separate allegations of financial misconduct. And then you, you, you'd see that previously uh, in May 2020, uh, he, he resigns from the municipality in a dramatic city. And then his name appears somewhere in Setapek uh, municipality. When residents uh, 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 protest against his appointment of, as a financial manager, then, uh, then the first thing that you are going to do, uh, you are going to call the police on, on the protesters who are trying their best to deal with corruption, but you are going to arrest these ones and then uh, uh, say that you, you look like you are doing something. You know, and whereas these ones are not the big fish, the one who is actually doing corruption is the one that they are protesting against. In South Africa, what is, is important is the reactive nature of the law enforcement agencies uh, than the proactive in nature and the capacity to, 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 to preempt corruption. Uh, uh, what, what, what measures have they taken to, to then uh, do that? I, 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 I fail, I really fail, Chair, to understand uh, when it comes to that. And then, uh, then you've got a, a, in Matsukama, there's another issue again that has not uh, find expression there in terms of uh, the, the municipality refusing to provide, to be provided independent, to provide independent uh, investigate, investigators with documents or allow officials to be interviewed even. How do we do, what, 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 what does the law enforcement agencies do there? When, when, when a municipality actually defies everything, resulting in, in a criminal case being opened, following the court or application by the municipality to suspend the appointment of the investigators. Now the MEC for local government brought, brought a counter application so you've got a situation where we are going to court. Where is service delivery there? If we are forever in courts trying to counter 
to, to counter each other. And then uh, there's no turnaround strategy because if you look at that, the case was yet in court in, in 1st of March, 2021, right? With judgment being reserved. Now, where are the people there? I, I, I do not know because our concern is, is the people themselves. Where are they there when officials are, 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 are swimming in court cases and where there is public funds uh, being uh, involved there? Uh, I, 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 I really uh, fail to understand. Can they clarify me that uh, what happens when a, when, a, when a municipality actually does that? I think, Chair, uh, that is about my submissions. Then you've got the last one, Chair. You've got Bito, Bito Municipality, the Western Cape. You've got Central Karu District. An investigation was provided in 2020. Investigation was completed and its findings handed uh, to the municipality. Copies of the report were handed to the Hawks. How far is that? How far, how far is the court in, with, in regards to, to, the, to the investigations that were done early in, in, 20, in 2020 of Central Karoo? Both Central Karoo and the one that, is, that was, that was uh, done in, in 2019 in Pitou Municipality. And who are the liable persons? A point of interest, who are the liable persons? What is the consequence management? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Um, Honorable Mbumza. Uh, chair. Chair. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 Matumba. Yes, I should have I should have came before yes, the last speaker. No, the, the 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 last speaker is going to if you are going to speak after Honorable Bumza and uh, Honorable Dike Direct. You know, and, according, according, according to the line, no, 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 supposed no. to come uh, after Honorable Spice. Honorable Matumba, please. I'm looking at the, the order myself. I'm chairing the meeting, by the way. But I'm telling you what you said before oh, when, to... when you were making the order. I'm not chairing, but that is what you said that after speech, it's me. Uh, honorable. So, that's what, so I, secu I secured a network based on that. Do I proceed, Chair? Please, Chair. I secured the network because of that, and I'm going to... Okay. Carry on. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Chair, um, if we are to go to page 21, page 72, and page 19 of uh, the report, the, of the first report, it will tell you that the matter was brought... Uh, to the attention of the institution by uh, whistleblowers. So this, this tell you directly that the institution itself really needs to be investigated the whole of it because they, their mechanisms should, could, they should have picked up uh, this mess. So it tells you that the organizer, the, the whole municip these municipalities themselves, they are corrupt, all of them. Now, what needs to be done is to improve uh, the system. Now, let me give you for an example. Uh, in Makado, you have a swimming pool that was refurbished by a contractor. That contractor was paid 1.1 uh, 1 million. But even today, the swimming pool is not uh, operational. It's more damaged than what it was before the contractor came. This thing is going to be picked up when the a whistleblower come in. And what we have seen uh, these days is that we can differentiate, differentiate between movie stars um, and hawks because they act when the case is popular. That's when you will see them uh, moving all over uh, the news. Now, Che, I, will, I want to make an extension to what a uh, uh, Honorable Mkalipi said that 
we only we see management only and in few cases we see a uh, political bearers now municipal financial management act makes it very simple it uh, put a separation between political and the management role in overseeing uh, in implementing and overseeing the implementation with management implementing and a uh, political office bearers overseeing the implementation so it cannot be that every time when we you go to arrest or when you go to act it's only management only when political office bearers uh, should have performed their duties that's why every time when they come here we ask them was this uh, uif reported to you did you investigate after investigating what did you find so in all these cases we are not getting what happened internally because there are internal mechanisms to um, to pick up any irregular expenditure and also right and authorized expenditure and according to municipal financial management act the recovery is there as consequences management and that act even allows council to open cases against those who are implicated so failure to do so you can see that political office bearers themselves are not acting they are and, and normally they are not acting because they too are involved and uh, municipal managers and uh, uh, directors are left in a point where they have to answer uh, for 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 everything so it goes that when they say close look what do we do from here so from here what we must do is that every time when there is a case political office bearers must account they have section 79 oversight committees they have mpec but those institutions are doing nothing some of them uh, i will give example with a case that was brought here by npa the, the case of of Makad. it's unfortunate um, the, NP, the report of the NPA doesn't give details. In that case of Makado, those service providers were being paid money every month. This thing extended for many months, up until the money reached uh, 700,000. Guess what happened to the perpetrators? One was demoted uh, and no case was opened. It was a case of pure fraud. The case was brought before council and council did exactly nothing they didn't act they were told we have people they were stealing money of the municipality what they did was to note the and uh, 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 um, the wasteful expenditure and moved on with their lives so those people if you are to look uh, into the law you will see that they are part of the crime that was committed because a crime was committed it was brought to their attention and they did not fit. So if we don't hit, they must uh, tighten the overseeing of, uh, of the implementation of the budget. This thing will never stop. It even speaks to us as the committee because when I, we ask these questions, Mpumalanga came here, they didn't answer what they did as of, uh, political office bearers. Kokta came the last time here, they didn't answer what they did. So Political office bearers are the main perpetrators here uh, because there, there is no oversight and there is no consequences management. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Honorable. Oh. Ah. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, let's welcome the presentations by the three state security agencies, uh, particularly the SIU presentation or report is so detailed. And uh, however, when you look at it, you begin to see some gaps in particular, 
Yeah, I know that uh, in the Mkhalakwena local municipality, we were given a report there when we took oversight that uh, when there was uh, a lot of infighting and everything there, that uh, an official, a junior official has just uh, elevated himself to a senior position in corporate services and uh, went on board to to employ service providers, not through the legal processes, but through actually just every service provider will just be issued a job card uh, at a value of 17 million to clear up uh, the vegetation. And uh, which is a clear fraudulent case. Uh, we don't know to what extent has the SIU investigation uncovered those particular things, because uh, that individual by this time should be actually behind bars. Given the mandate of the SIU, that in all these cases, they make a reference uh, to the NPA uh, of their investigations, as well as to uh, 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 disciplinary action referrals uh, to institutions like municipalities. And uh, they have the responsibility to monitor that such uh, disciplinary actions, referrals are being uh, uh, actually actioned by municipalities. In the event where the municipalities may not be complying with those referrals, uh, what option does the SIU have uh, to ensure that such uh, matters are actually carried out by municipalities? We must uh, commend the fact that uh, the SIU is uh, able to uh, institute uh, civil litigation to those officials who actually uh, uh, resign uh, even before investigations or uh, before disciplinary action is taken. That we commend that option because indeed um, we can't allow a situation where we'd be sending a wrong message where people would commit crime and then run away from the law. And then thereafter, there is nothing that is being done. In the observations, SIU is indicating that uh, critical factors here is that there are a number of uh, procurement irregularities. The, the poor record keeping is deliberate because it's a very basic thing. It's deliberate to allow thieving in the institutions. But he was also indicating that uh, they are actually providing systemic recommendations uh, because these matters are systemic in nature. Are uh, these systemic recommendations that are made by the SIU to municipalities being implemented at that particular level? If they are not implemented, what further action is the SIU taking with uh, the Department of COCTA as a department that is responsible for, in terms of the constitution, for building a capacity through support by legislative measures and others. Do they also take such recommendations to the cooperative uh, Government, government and the traditional affairs department so that it should ensure that uh, there is a systemic recommendation that making are actually implemented in the municipalities. Chair, around the list of these municipalities that are being investigated and the cases that are going on, earlier on when uh, they made presentation on the 20th of November, 2019. 
I raised an issue where there was a case that was not appearing. Uh, in 2008, Alfred's old case that appeared, I've looked at the session on the report presented, it's not even there on the detail that has been presented to us of the older cases. Uh, where a, an alleged 28 million was swindled in the municipality. And uh, I think they had been handling that with the DPCI. Um, they have now not reported on that one. Even now, I don't see it as to that, that case disappeared from the screen. I know that it has been a case. I think it's this issue that is raised by Honorable uh, Eza, that uh, advocate by two these cases are being uh, remanded because this case had been remanded, remanded, remanded way back. Now we don't hear of that case, what has been the outcome and the course of law in this country. The, the other one would be that uh, when they were reporting at that particular time, there was a case of 25 million other than this 38 around Adrian that is reported. How far are they with that 25 million case in Alfred? So besides the 38 million they are reporting on now. The, the DCI, the DPCI, the Hawks, uh, when General or Advocates or General Libya is presenting here, I think there are some errors that needs to be corrected. There is no Mbizana municipality in the free state. As there is no Mantele municipality in the Eastern Cape, that is Umzifubu municipality. And Mbizana municipality, so you have to correct your judgment. And Mbizana municipality is here in the Eastern Cape, not in free state. And is what is current now called Winnie Mandela municipality. That's, that, that's what I've seen there. At the same time, in that report, uh, there are two municipalities uh, is Inokum, Tejima, and Lukanji. And I assume that uh, that Lukanji is what is Inokum Kijima now. But in this presentation, there is Inokum Kijima municipality and the Lukanji municipality. And Lukanji died in 2016, and then Inokum Kijima emerged. Again, uh, We, we would appreciate in this era of a uh, fourth industrial revolution that we are not given a report verbally whether those are the achievements that happened three hours ago. We are at this technological age where that, that report around those cases of arrest of yesterday, they should have formed part of this report instead of being reported verbally to us as a committee. Now we don't have that report. So because it was verbal, I think going to the future, uh, uh, the, the DPIC should give us a report, a written report. We, we don't want to be briefed here, we want a report. We don't want verbal briefings. The other one I'll come to advocate Patoy. You are raising a critical issue that uh, your observation is that uh, a number of uh, in the supply chain system in the municipality, there are fake uh, companies are actually used as part of looting uh, uh, municipal finances. Now, I wanted to be clear as to 
what specific recommendation were you making in relation of uh, addressing uh, such uh, loopholes that are used uh, by officials and institutions and companies uh, to commit crime? Uh, how would we address that going forward? Uh, thanks, Shen. I will come back later. Uh, thank you. If you will be able, uh, I've got uh, a hand here yeah, with an iPhone. So I uh, we have been trying to check. Who, who is that? It's Honorable Msimang. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, welcome, Honorable Msimang. Uh, nobody said you are. Uh, we have been trying to check who is this. I thought initially it was uh, uh, the, the, the Honorable Matumba who I was fighting with. I thought he was this iPhone. So welcome. And uh, for those of you who do not know, Honorable Simang is a new member. Uh, of parliament, he has just joined. Uh, uh, he's even new than me. Uh, welcome. Uh, can I give you an opportunity to speak? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as I said, uh, I'm Honorable uh, Exum Simango. I am not going to go into specific presentation, but uh, I will just raise points of concerns and maybe comments there, there and there on the things that I've managed to, to pick up. Um, maybe firstly, it is important to note that one, the trends are more or less the same when you look at the, the 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 crimes that are committed in different municipalities or in the reports that has been, that have been presented to to the committee now i'm saying maybe we we've got to have an honest discussion or a debate for that matter uh, as politicians outside of the entities to say now that we know what are the trends or what are the things that officials do in order to make sure that they commit these uh, offenses. What is it that we can be able to put in place in order to make sure that we circumvent these things from happening in moving forward? And I think that should be a discussion that we have, all of us, without really looking at the political colors that we are wearing or that we are representing in parliament. Because I honestly believe that um, uh, 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 corruption is... A, is a cancer that affects all of us as politicians. In fact, as South Africans, because we're here representing uh, uh, South Africans. And I think, Chair, maybe you need to, you, you, you will then direct, us, direct me as to say, what is it that you think uh, we can be able to do around that matter? And then the second um, uh, uh, um, uh, point that I want to raise is that there is a, okay, when you look, uh, someone talks about suspended sentences uh, 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 that are headed down to some of these cases. For me, um, I understand that, of course, that is within the framework uh, because uh, courts works on, 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 on the evidence presented to them. As a result, they will then arrive into a determination that uh, an official that would have, uh, have, 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 have committed a particular crime then deserve this particular sense. But it does not send the sense of frustration that government is having in order to deal with these uh, 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 trends. Because then what, then, what, what, what does then it do? It, it then gives everyone that wants to commit these uh, sentences, I mean, this, 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 um, this crime, uh, an impression that you can do it, you will get a, a, a suspended a sentence. So I, I, I'm saying we've got to also find a way of making sure that uh, if it means we, 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 we influence the change on, 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 on the... Um, on the on the on the outcomes uh, in 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 uh, in legislation, we've got to do that in order to make sure that 
uh, we deal with these things because the suspended sentences, honestly speaking, I don't think that they are enough for those that uh, would have committed uh, uh, these crimes. And then uh, the third one will be around the COVID-19 cases. Um, it's three years later, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, honorable members. I'm not sure whether we do have a sense of when can we, when are we going to conclude on this on 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 these cases, because for me it's either you have a case against me or you do not have. It's either there is evidence or there is no evidence. Because you can't keep on suspending. I mean, there are other cases that you will end up having a backlog because of we are not moving with speed with cases that were reported or that that are sitting at your disposal. Uh, 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 for, for, for the past three years and we are not concluding. So I'm, I just want to check, when do we think uh, we will be able to, to conclude uh, 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 these, these, these uh, cases? Uh, and again, SIU speaks about um, officials that uh, resigns before the investigations uh, commence. And they also tell us that, look, they go as far as uh, freezing the pension fund. For me, that is uh, commended. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good thing to do. But I'm saying, maybe let me paint a picture. Um, I, I, I smuggle uh, 10 million in the municipality. And my pension fund is around uh, two, 2 million. You look at... At, 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 at the situation. I mean, honestly speaking, the official can easily take a decision to say that, ah, no, I know that the major would be that they will just freeze the, the, the pension fund, which is far less than what I would have uh, uh, smuggled uh, 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 in the municipal. So I'm saying, again, okay, it's something that also we need to then find a way to say, because we now know that, look, Normally, these are the trends. Then, what is it that we need to do in order to make sure that uh, we, we 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 don't get uh, these these things uh, happening in the in the in the near future? The last one, chair, that I have is around the public opinion, especially on the on the state capture. I I, I want to get a sense because the public opinion suggests that. Uh, and, and maybe this is directed to advocate uh, Patoy uh, to say it looks like, or the public opinion suggests that we you are not moving with speed in 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 in, in crimes of that nature, and uh, this might be informed by the fact that you are dealing with politicians on this regard. Now, of course, public opinion remains public opinion. And as politicians, we can't disregard these uh, public opinions. We've got to ask, because you are closer to the process, you are closer to the situation. Maybe you've got to then give us a sense of what is it that you think uh, is happening. So that when we speak to our people on the ground, we are able to also put them in your situation or in your corner and say, this is how far you, you, you have gone, and these are the processes that you need to follow. Because fair enough, there are processes that you need to follow in order to make sure that uh, uh, you move with, with the necessary speed that is required, as opposed to the current speed that you are supposedly moving with. And uh, it's, it's, it's not a, a, a sufficient a, 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 a speed. So I'm saying, maybe just give us a sense, just to say, the, the public opinion that is there, do you think, uh, is it correct, or, or, or where, where, where are we, so that we are able to then have a sense as, as members of parliament. I think for now, Chair, uh, I will have to stop there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, somebody wanted to see your face, but I couldn't uh, uh, disrupt your, your speech. <laughs> he thought, uh, <laughs> because you uh, I didn't welcome you, but I think you'll note it. If you come up, you will show yourself. Uh, now it's Honorable Direko. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Let me greet my colleagues and the guests that we have in our meeting. And let me also welcome the presentations that have been made to us. Chair, uh, I would like to, to check. My question is not specifically to one presentation, but it goes to all of them. 
uh, what is the duration of finalizing the cases? For in my observation, there have been a backlog in finalizing the cases. So I would like to check with the entities as to what is causing the delay in finalizing the cases that they have been investigating. And number two, Chair, I also want to check what is the criteria for uh, instituting investigation? Is it because of what has been reported on different medias or is it because of the whistleblowers? How do they decide that they are going to investigate and how do they decide, how do they choose those investigations is to, we are going under this one or that one. The reason why I'm asking is because on social media, we've experienced a lot of allegations of corruption in most municipalities and most departments, but some of them are not part of those investigations that we, we, we've just uh, received the report on. And is, is the presentation that we have received on the investigation, the current updated one, the reason why I'm asking, because when you look at other municipalities, they will show that there's one investigation that is taking place. But when you zoom into that municipality, you realize that there's more investigation that are taking place in that institution. So I would like to check if it's the current one. And lastly, Chair, in terms of the cases that they have concluded, is there politicians who were involved? And if they were involved, how have they dealt with the matter? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I will not uh, comment. Uh, I will allow, um, maybe let's, let's follow that order when we started and um, start with SIU. SIU. Honorable Chair and yeah. Honorable Members, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to respond. Uh, uh, we, let me respond to Honorable Mkalipi. Uh, the rare cases where councillors or politicians are involved, uh, in cases where we investigated, uh, we have made findings where evidence uh, points us to that. Uh, there are about two cases that, uh, that I can point to. Uh, in JB Marx, uh, we've made a finding you know, against the mayor and I think uh, uh, action has been taken. Uh, and I'm aware that uh, uh, in the Eastern Cape, uh, in the Nelson Mandela funeral uh, uh, allegations and investigations, uh, of course, our colleagues uh, in GPCI and in MPA are involved. Uh, I know that uh, 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 she might be a former, former MEC, but She's also been charged. Uh, uh, so, so I'm really just making uh, those, those examples. But I think it's just so important to note that, uh, and as we always say, uh, our investigations are allegations based and the findings are based on evidence. Uh, in all instances where we have made findings is based on credible evidence that we would have gathered. And we do point uh, in all directions at all levels uh, where evidence points us to. And we have had cases where, uh, well, some of those are not really municipal cases, but there are cases where politicians have been pointed to and we have ended up in court where we've defended our case based on the evidence we had and courts have ruled in our favor. So honorable chair and honorable members, we really want to assure this committee that we will do our best and do our best without fear, favor or prejudice. That is our mantra. We've signed up to that and 
we will not relent on that one. Um, with regard to uh, Mpapuli matter, uh, Honorable Mkalipe, this is the specific matter that you pointed out. It is in the, in the presentation, slide number 16, uh, indicates, indicates that uh, this matter uh, was covered by Proclamation 52 of 2014. The investigation has been completed and we have had six uh, recommendations for disciplinary action against officials. And there's currently a civil proceedings that are ongoing. The value of the civil proceedings avail based on the contract that we are seeking to set aside, it's 326 million. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Fisahi, or Advocate Fisahi, uh, uh, can give uh, just a quick clarity around the quantum or the value. Uh, Honorable Mkalipe mentions a matter of about 73 million. Uh, as we speak, the matter that is in our books, it's this only one where we're seeking to set the contract aside valued at 326 million. And I'm aware, I'm aware that uh, Mr. Papuli also instituted a case challenging our report. And that matter was heard in the High Court in Limpopo. And just few, I think two weeks or so ago, we got an order, a judgment in that case where he lost, he lost that case. And now the main case is proceeding, the main case to set aside this contract and recover the monies. Uh, 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 Advocate Fisahi, uh, I just want to respond comprehensively to Honorable Mkalipi. Can you, can you just appraise the committee around the quantum, whether we've got a single matter of 73 million or, or is this a, a comprehensive matter of the 326? Uh, I hope my colleague, Advocate Fesahi. Yes, uh, honorable members, uh, um, honorable chair, of course. Uh, indeed, uh, when, when we instituted this matter, uh, it, it involved a contract to the value of 326 million. And that is uh, uh, why the value in our books is reflected as 326 million, because we seek to, to uh, set aside uh, this contract to that value. The actual relief or repayment that we, that we uh, seek and, and, and looking for is a lesser amount in the region of the, of the 73 million uh, mentioned. But uh, the declaration of invalidity of the contract that we're looking for, the value is, is 326 million. In this matter, of course, we, we have consulted a prominent external senior counsel and we have we have uh, been advised of, on the merits, and that's why we've instituted, uh, uh, instituted this, this, this matter. And uh, uh, we uh, obviously prefer not to debate the merits of, of our case in, in, the, in the public media or the press, uh, or uh, even in, 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 in this forum, but, but, reserve, but uh, ask for this matter to be dealt with in court, which, was, which will hopefully be very soon. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you, Advocate Kisafi. Uh, with regard to the comments made by Honorable uh, Baba Ntaba, uh, I think, Honorable Chair, I, just to repeat that uh, we investigate every allegation. We receive allegations from whistleblowers. We also receive allegations from uh, in the departments, uh, accounting officers referring matters to us for investigation. In some instances, we've received uh, matters from some of the portfolio committees uh, to look at, assess, and investigate. So when we investigate, uh, we do not at all investigate selectively. And I'm sure this, is, this goes to all of us in the law enforcement agency. 
just to repeat, we do our work really without fear, favor, or prejudice. Uh, Honorable Kaba uh, refers to a matter in Gauteng uh, about uh, 400 million. Uh, the matter that in our books in the Houghton Department of Education is around the PPE uh, investigation, and that investigation has been completed and there are outcomes. We've gone to the special tribunal indeed uh, to set aside, uh, the, seeking to set aside the contract. But Honorable Chair, um, because it's not a municipal matter, so we did not come ready on that one, should the, should the Honorable Committee require us to appraise them on that matter? Uh, we can do so uh, in detail uh, when, if the Honorable Committee can call us uh, upon to do so. And we will demonstrate uh, how effectively we've, we've investigated that matter and the outcomes that we have reached and the actions that have been taken uh, just to satisfy the committee that we are even-handed when we do our work. And wherever evidence leads us to, we go. It doesn't matter uh, uh, at, what, at what level you are. Um, right, uh, in terms of, uh, and we really uh, appreciate the support, um, uh, Honorable Spies, in terms of councils that do not take action. In fact, I would even extend it even to accounting authorities or accounting officers that do not take action on the disciplinary matters that are referred to them, that they should really be held to account. Uh, uh, we will be ready to support the committee and give details in terms of names, when were the disciplinary uh, actions referred to, and, and, what has, and what has been done to date. Uh, need, needless to say that our observation really and is that those actions are not dealt with as speedily as it would be expected in the public interest. And we are on record, we've said that before, that uh, uh, those accounting officers and accounting authorities need to be held to account for failure to implement consequence management. Um, uh, th there's, there's a case around on Honorable Teza. Uh, Honorable Teza referred to, uh, I think, various municipalities, um, Sugalikwa, uh, Emalaseni, Naisna. Uh, so, on checking in our books, uh, we haven't had allegations relating to Msukaligwa. Uh, we would have uh, covered it. Um, the, the only matter that is in our books of all the municipalities he referred to is Matikama, which is in the Western Cape. Uh, and in that case, in that case, uh, yes, indeed, in our investigation, there was, uh, there was resistance, there was pushback. Uh, in fact, at some point, even the municipal manager issued some instruction that, uh, you know, officials should not cooperate with our investigation. Uh, I think it, it is Matsikama. Uh, Mr. Lekhetu, you can confirm, I think it is. Um, where we even issued uh, late a criminal case, yes. Uh, Mr. Teza is correct. A case was opened and the municipal manager, I think, was arrested. And we did that solely, solely to indicate that no one is above the law. Uh, if you interfere with our investigation in terms of the legislation, it is a criminal offense. And we, and we ensured that that criminal case is opened uh, just so that everyone can really know that uh, when we investigate, based on authorized proclamation, uh, and no, one, no one should interfere with our investigation. Uh, so uh, on, 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 on the other uh, municipalities, uh, and, and I did indicate that uh, if, if we receive these allegations, uh, we will of course consider them, subject them to our case management process and uh, ensure that they are looked into. Of course, we do check 
whether are they not being investigated uh, either by uh, our colleagues in the DPCI, because at all costs we seek to avoid duplication. Uh, yeah, uh, the issue related, uh, Honorable Mpumza, uh, the monitoring of disciplinary actions. Yes, we do do that. Uh, as I indicated, we do have a function in SIU that uh, monitors on the, on the referrals. And referrals of disciplinary actions also are part of this monitoring. So we do get updates. And where we realize that uh, uh, the accounting officers uh, are not acting, uh, so the question is what next? Where the accounting officers do not act, we escalate, we escalate to the executive authorities uh, so that appropriate action can be taken. Uh, and we are really pleased that uh, this honorable committee could also in its uh, uh, monitoring uh, functions also assist to ensure that there's accountability in all of those, uh, in all of those uh, uh, municipalities. With regard to uh, poor record keeping, indeed, uh, we can't agree more with the uh, Honorable Mpunza that in many instances, uh, documents are dissipated deliberately only to frustrate the investigation. But we have now, uh, we're going further. We don't just take it at face value where we are told that we can't find documents. Uh, my instruction to the teams is that we need to find out whose accountability it was to ensure that the documents are kept uh, and ensure that, uh, uh, that uh, the, those uh, documents uh, are available. Failing which, uh, failing which we should then take action against those who are responsible uh, to ensure that the documents are kept and kept safe because there are legislative requirements in terms of documents being kept. So when they are, when they are not kept, and uh, uh, there's no accountability, it means that there's failure to comply and actions should follow uh, uh, based on that. Um, Alfred Nzo, I, I think on Alfred Nzo, I think it was pointing to our colleagues in the DPCI. Uh, okay, uh, Honorable Simango, again, we really cannot agree more we agree 100% uh, uh, that, uh, that you know, the trends are similar uh, and we really would be pleased if, if the Honorable Committee could really uh, uh, also engage around the bigger, the bigger picture, the bigger plan, what is it that, uh, that could be done and we stand ready uh, as law enforcement agencies uh, to assist in that regard, particularly in the improvements that would ensure that uh, uh, we are proactive and prevent these matters from happening. Uh, my colleague NDPP said that would prevent that downstream, you know, on the, on the reactive side uh, that we do not uh, find that we are flocked with cases. If we prevent, we are likely to reduce the reactive side. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Honorable Mbumza, we, we do take the the, the guidance that uh, on the systemic recommendations, we also should rope in the National Department of COCTA. We will do so. Uh, we are now engaging with them around the establishment of this local government anti-corruption forum, but we will take that up and ensure that they are looped in and they do come in to ensure that uh, uh, the systemic recommendations are implemented. Honorable Chair, I think those were uh, some of the questions that were pointing towards uh, uh, the SIU. Uh, I will pause here. If there are any others, uh, we stand ready to, to respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can we now give to DPCI? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. I will uh, deal with the questions that uh, relate to the DPCI. Uh, firstly, uh, the question from the Honorable uh, Mokalipi. 
that is concerned about the provision of the details of the matters that uh, we are dealing with. Uh, indeed, we would have loved to share as much information as possible. But the matters that uh, we are dealing with are mostly alive, Chairperson. And those that are alive, we are dealing with witnesses who must be protected. We are dealing with uh, whistleblowers who usually fear to come forward if uh, the protective mechanism are not sufficient, especially at the initial stage. I can cite an example of how we have dealt with the matter of etequini that is currently saving before court. It has not been easy. People that uh, we were to get evidence from were within the system, working in the municipalities, and the intimidations and the threats that were coming in was such that uh, if we, we were to disclose how we are conducting the investigation, if the external people outside those who were close to the investigation were to know, we may not have succeeded in the way we have done. And I must also indicate that uh, in that process, we have lost one person. Somebody has lost their life during that uh, investigation. And I can also go out and say that uh, also in Limpopo, during the investigation, certain people have lost their lives. And some of uh, the intimidations that happened in uh, Mohalakwen have resulted in the matter being removed uh, from Mohalakwen so that it can be placed elsewhere in Pulogwan. And uh, I can also indicate that uh, as an example, I think it is already known that uh, in Houdin, one of the whistleblowers have lost the life. Uh, it is based on that uh, chairperson that uh, during the process of investigation, we try our best to protect the information of what we are investigating. And it can also be uh, noted that uh, some of the evidence that uh, we need are still in the hands of the suspects. And if they were to know what we are about to go and get, there will be destruction of evidence in different way. We have seen some of the pre uh, premises going on fire uh, with the uh, intention of destroying evidence. So with uh, the matters that are still alive before we arrest and uh, put the matters on the court roll, it is usually difficult to disclose. If we were to be disclosing in a closed session, but because sessions of this nature are in public, even the suspects have got the opportunity of listening and say, oh, this is what they are looking for, but we can try uh, our best to maybe uh, enhance and see how best can we uh, enhance the information so that uh, it can be better than uh, providing the, the, the statistical information so that uh, maybe uh, the honorable members can see what we are dealing with. We thought that if we point out the municipalities that we are uh, working on, it might suffice. So that is the um, question of uh, the Honorable uh, Mokaliti. Coming to the uh, questions that uh, were raised by uh, the Honorable uh, Taba, we have taken note of that uh, view of selective uh, investigations. I think that uh, my colleague uh, Advocate Mutivi has already responded with regard to the uh, case that was cited that uh, belongs not in the municipalities but in the uh, departments. Just to uh, reiterate our view on how we conduct our work, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members, all of the members in the DPCI take an oath of office 
before they start their work. I have taken my oath of office before the judge that uh, we, in terms of section 17E of the South African Police Service Act, as passed by the Honorable House, we shall conduct our work without fear, favor, or prejudice. When we conduct our investigation, we don't investigate an individual. We investigate crime that is being alleged to have been committed. Who of whoever, regardless of the status, the investigation point to, we will uh, visit that person with the intention of securing the attendance of such person in court. Um, I think that uh, the, uh, I have touched on that, uh, based on that, I think it shall also be addressing the issue of uh, the view expressed comparing how the investigation was done in the free state and how now it's been done in Houdin. But I think the fact that uh, I say we do it without fear, favor, or prejudice will also cover on that, that it is only the crime that we follow. And uh, I must say that uh, as the DPCI, we are a political. We don't uh, support any specific political uh, view. We deal with uh, crime as it appears. So that, that I think will uh, address that matter. When we deal with crime, we, we take a zero tolerance approach. So some of the matters may appear to be insignificant as the NDP uh, NDPP has indicated, but a zero tolerance approach ensures that uh, we deal with every uh, one who is involved in crime. And I think that I shall also have, uh, when I dealt with the matter of uh, the Honorable Mukalipi dealt with the matter of uh, the Honorable Peace when it comes to the details of the matters that uh, we are investigating. And then, um, Coming to the question of uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Casa, or, um, on the uh, delay in the matters that uh, we are dealing with, I think that uh, we shall have indicated the various factors that influence uh, the delay in some of the matters. There are those matters that are more complicated than others, and the others are not. I pointed as an example that uh, some of the matters you will find that they have got uh, more than 2,000 uh, counts. That is more than 2,000 cases in one. And some of the matters you may find that uh, the the counts are less than five, which uh, will obviously be completed quicker than those matters that have got uh, more than 2,000 counts. So, but uh, in all uh, our investigation, we try our utmost best to conclude the matters speedily. Indeed, there are some of the matters emanating from uh, 2011 and the like. Some of them have been concluded, which uh, when we were reporting from our side, we said that uh, we only deal with those that are uh, still alive. Uh, coming to the um, question of uh, the Honorable uh, Mpunza, uh, I think that uh, the issue of uh, the DPCI with regard to the name of the municipalities uh, uh, that may not be correct. Indeed, we can uh, accept that some of the names that uh, we may be using might be the old names at the time when the uh, crimes were reported or at the time when the contracts uh, were entered into. But we will be uh, correct that so that uh, the name speaks to what is uh, recent. And then uh, furthermore, the issue that uh, we should not uh, report verbally, uh, 
uh, it was just in the introductory remarks where we were trying to demonstrate that uh, actually the performance of work continues. That, that's why I restricted only to matters that shall have happened yesterday. So that it can be seen that uh, as we speak, there are matters that are unfolding in courts every day there will be a success in one way or the other. So I have taken note of that, that maybe in the future we can also uh, highlight more on the matters that have been finalized. Uh, I accept that those that I have highlighted are not in the written report, but they have happened yesterday after we have submitted uh, our report for the purpose of uh, the committee. Uh, coming to the question of uh, Honorable uh, uh, Matumba, indeed, uh, we have taken note of the view that uh, some of uh, the perceptions appear that uh, there are, we are seen to be acting like, like movie stars as opposed to the hawks. Uh, this is what I have highlighted that. Uh, in some of the successes that uh, we do, uh, they may not be visible as much as the others do. And I think that uh, in those cases, when we have released the media statement, the journalists happen to go to court, you may find that there is more publicity as opposed to those that uh, are relying only on a written media statement. We have indicated that uh, we have been cautioned not to operate in a way that might appear to be a Hollywood style. But the successes themselves at time, they get, uh, they receive attention from court. Uh, so this is why I highlighted at the beginning that uh, the successes of yesterday, you may not see them uh, coming in the media space. But if we just take note that uh, no day goes by without success being registered uh, by the DPCI. So that was the purpose just to highlight that uh, there is work that is going on. As to the uh, suspects that have been arrested, which is uh, also a continuation of uh, the question by the Honorable Matimba. Indeed, one, when we deal with the uh, municipalities, I think the highest politician that is normally involved here, you may find that is up to the uh, mayor, <laughs> as the rest will be uh, councillors. And then uh, most of the people that are doing these uh, fraudulent activities, you find that they are official, uh, such as municipal manager and some of the official. Sometimes it is not that easy to detect that uh, these officials have been doing what they have done because of the involvement of the politicians. But where there is evidence showing that uh, the politicians is involved, we do not discriminate as to who need to go and answer. All of those that we find the elements of having committed a crime, we will secure their attendance uh, in court. And the question of uh, the Honorable uh, Musiman that uh, deals with um, the COVID-19 cases, when do we decide to conclude these matters? Uh, indeed, these uh, COVID-related matters, as the COVID-19 only started in 2019 after December or in December, and the corruption or the theft of these matters only started after, usually uh, most of the areas happened uh, after uh, March 2020. And uh, as we speak now, Already 17 accused persons have been uh, convicted. And I think one uh, have been acquitted, but I think that uh, the 
uh, NPA might uh, want to uh, hint on this, but because we are jointly working at the Fusion Center, we monitor closely the achievement. But as we have indicated, there is more than a hundred of the accused persons that have already been processed through court. As we speak, some of the uh, matters are being uh, identified that have been uh, committed. So it means that while the investigation is continuing, some of the matters that are ready are placed on the court and the uh, NPA disposes of those, while some of the matters, the SARS and the uh, SIU uh, will be, and the NPA will be uh, confiscating the uh, assets. But I just wanted to indicate that uh, as to when do we decide to conclude, it depends on the complexity of the matters, but the intention is that we want to finalize them speedily, which is why they are prioritized matters, which we work in a fusion center model. And the last question uh, coming from the um, honorable uh, director, uh, again talks to the delay in finalizing the matters as well as a decision on the investigation as to when do we decide to investigate where does this come from and uh, where the politicians are involved. I think that uh, on the areas where the politicians are involved, I have already indicated that uh, we do not discriminate it all depends as to who are the suspects that shall have committed crime. And then the decision to investigate, as we uh, show in the Fusion Center report, some we pick up from the media, we check as to the correctness of what is being reported. And then after ascertaining the correctness, some we open an inquiry, some we really open a docket if the allegations that appear on the media state space is correct. Some of the information obviously come from the SIU, which is uh, most of the matters that we are dealing with here. Some of the matters are reported through section 34 of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act. This relates to matters involving more than 110,000 and the like. Some of the matters will be reported by uh, informers. Some of the matters will be reported by people who have suffered loss in the commission. So the sources of the cases are different. So that is what I wanted to be uh, indicating, honorable chairperson. I hope that I have answered uh, all the questions that uh, relate to the uh, hawks. If I have missed, my colleagues may also come in and ask you. Thank you very much, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members. Thank you very much. Um, I would suggest that let's move to NPA because of time. Yes, thank you, Chair. Chair, I will, a lot of the, the issues raised have been covered by, by my partners, so I will not deal with those. Um, I won't deal with it um, uh, official by, uh, the, in terms of each member of parliament, but I'll deal with it in terms of themes because there are certain commonalities. Um, so in terms of the, some of the comments about the lack of detail, I think the general has covered it, um, but I think it would be useful to understand what kind of detail does the committee want? Um, because there's a lot of detail that we cannot share in a public platform uh, relating to investigations. Um, and so, um, you know, there's, there's that uh, tension, so to speak, between sharing and keeping the, the committee updated and ensuring that we don't compromise um, investigations. Um, that are very sensitive and sometimes involve uh, uh, people with a lot of means at their disposal and thereby put, as the general said, uh, witnesses, etc., at risk. So it would be good to understand what exactly is the level of detail that the committee wants so that we understand your expectation and we can, we can address it in a very direct way. 
in whether we can or can't meet that expectation. Um, we prepared, I should say at the outset as well, Chair, we prepared our presentation on the basis that we had 20 minutes um, and we, we, we sent a 157 page uh, PowerPoint report in slide format or report that we that has the detail and we didn't expect to be presenting as the SIU did line by line, which it seems like the committee actually appreciated in, in some, but that was not the brief that we were given. So perhaps there's also that uh, misunderstanding and communication about what the expectations are. Um, so we, we actually condensed that into a, a 20 minute or maybe 30 even presentation uh, on the understanding that the detail would have been um, gone through by members and, and we could still answer questions on that. Uh, but if there's a different expectation, then we would be, um, if that can be communicated to us so that we, we, we actually meet the expectations of, of the committee. Um, Chair, some of the comments um, with regard to selective investigations and uh, prosecutions possibly, um, General Labia and, and Advocate uh, Motibi have talked about um, the fact that we, we, we follow the evidence. And, and I think beyond that, um, that is all we can say is that we do not target people. Um, and, and there's a lot of uh, public information relating to certain people, but we don't target people. We follow the evidence as, as the general said. And it doesn't matter who is at the end of that, of the, of the evidence when the, when the, matter is fully investigated and the NPA is able to take a decision on it. it doesn't matter who's at the end of that. We will prosecute, um, you know, in line with our constitutional mandate to prosecute irrespective of which political party or, or you know, the affiliations of um, or how powerful or, or not people are. We follow the evidence and we prosecute cases. Um, it is correct that we can't do all the cases. Neither can, can be can the hawks uh, investigate all the matters that is before them, um, matters that, that are before them. And so they do need to prioritize certain matters, but within the ACTT space, we have very clear case selection criteria, which actually guides the selection of cases in terms of which are the cases that we should prioritize for impact. So, so that will happen because we, we simply don't have, we're not able to deal with everything all at once, but we are trying to address the, the, the priority matters. Um, the issue of private prosecutions was raised. Um, the issue of prosecution is, is, is the NPA is constitutionally mandated to do prosecutions. And, and one of the reasons why you have a, a national prosecuting authority is to ensure that prosecutions are indeed conducted in, in an objective way in line with the constitution and that there aren't any uh, private or other uh, imperatives that actually drive prosecutions. And so what is the ideal solution which we are working towards is ensuring that the National Prosecuting Authority is properly capacitated to do, deal with all the matters um, that, that um, are investigated. And so that is, that is where we're heading. We're looking at resourcing and there's been a lot of uh, support um, from the executive in terms of capacitating the NPA. And so we are moving in that direction so that the, the constitutionally mandated entity to do prosecutions is able to do it in an objective and fair manner. Uh, with regard to, to the issue of um, um, chair, um, there, were, there, were many, um, there were many comments that were made and inputs that that um, perhaps uh, one I think it was one of our the honourable members recognised the discussion needs to be had in a, in a different fora, um, and 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 many didn't actually relate to to what the work that that we in particular as law enforcement would be able to do or impact on, um, and and that would be um, so I can't really comment on those those issues but to just to, to really reinforce what General Labia said and to say that law enforcement we are not political players. We are apolitical, as he put it, and we, we deal with cases that come before us on the basis of the evidence. And so, you know, we, we can't be, and we've got to be really careful about being drawn into political um, discussions and particularly as we move towards, uh, you know, uh, conferences at the end of this year, 
law enforcement gets entangled in, in various dynamics. And so we have to be really careful that we hold the line and make sure we do what we are constitutionally mandated to do and, and nothing more. Um, we've actually, um, um, you know, we, we, we don't try cases in public. So, so we've really got to be careful about how we, we, we uh, how much of information, I, I'm repeating myself, that was the first point I made. So I'm not going to deal with that again. Um, Chair, I'm, I'm, those, those are the broad um, areas that I, I, I think we needed to respond to. Much of it is about investigations. And, and um, the, the, one of the questions I think was, um, you know, how long does it take to, for a matter to be, to, to be prosecuted finally? And, and it's, that's a very difficult question to answer because it really depends on, on complexities of the matter. It, there are simpler matters that can be in court. And there are a number of courts cases that have been enrolled, which are obviously the ones that we're able to investigate quicker and get to the, get to the courts. Um, so, so that, and there was a question also about delays and in court, and there's so many reasons for delays in courts. And, and, and the, mm -hmm. the Stalingrad tactics of, of, of the defense to make sure that cases are delayed is something that we as the prosecuting authority are really vigorously fighting but at the end of the day, the decisions are taken by the magistrates in terms of whether adjournments are granted or not. And all we can do is oppose them vehemently, which is what we do in, in the appropriate circumstances. So I think that that is really an important um, issue to note as far as delays. Very often, it's out, once it gets into the court process, it's very often out of, out of the hands of the prosecutions. Um, and finally, I just want to end by saying that we agree that we there, there's so much more to do, and we are, you know, there's you know, it's overwhelming the amount of corruption, particularly in the municipal spaces, and we we a lot more needs to be done. But the the as far as we've come in terms of getting cases to court, investigating matters, as General Labia has indicated, number of municipalities. Um, I'm, I'm not saying we need to pat ourselves on our back in terms of great job done, but it really shows that these cases would never have seen the inside of a courtroom uh, a couple of years back. So let's say prior to 2019, there wasn't movement in these matters. There was no will at many levels, including at law enforcement level to deal with these cases because often they, they involve politically exposed persons. And so now there is really across all our partners in law enforcement, a deep commitment to make sure that we rid, we do everything possible to rid our country of the scourge of corruption. We understand its depths. Well, it's, it's worse than we really thought. But I, we, as, as Advocate uh, Motivi said, you know, all we can do, our, our work must demonstrate at the end of the day that the wheels of justice are turning. It does that, but it needs to turn faster. And hopefully, um, you know, when, when we next report, um, and hopefully that's not going to be too soon, Chair, we are really, you know, reporting to, we, we accept our accountability, uh, uh, responsibility and, and your role as, as the committee, uh, but it takes a lot of effort and time on the part of many, many staff members to get presentations together, to make presentations. We are happy to account and, and to report, but hopefully it will be reasonable uh, because there's there's a lot of priorities on the table of law enforcement and and we really need to get on with the job. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, let me just uh, because I see time is not uh, on our side. Maybe just summarize. Uh, but if I see any hand, I'll allow them after my summary. But Parliament itself, it's. Uh, its primary responsibility as well uh, is to do oversight uh, over the executive actions uh, or non-actions. So we actually, in doing that work, would want to collaborate with yourselves. So I'm sure out of the discussions that we have had, we are noting some areas where we need to do more as, as, as parliament and specifically the committee is an extension of parliament. So we agree with that. 
Number three, I think we also agree that uh, law enforcement agencies must do their work, uh, deal with corruption, and uh, focus on it. So there's no question, the committee can never come here and say we have got an issue with that. Uh, we, we can't have that. Do your work without fear, without prejudice, without favor. So that should be uh, the, the attitude of the committee. We have noted some areas where we need to focus on, which may not necessarily be areas that uh, we should be expecting this from yourselves. Yeah, there are areas that we have noted as we were engaging that would require the committee to plan around in doing its oversight. And uh, such areas like uh, implementation of reports by municipalities, whether we're talking uh, consequences for wrongdoing by officials. I think we also noted, which is a trend, this thing of uh, uh, some officials jumping ship when they are being followed. We noted uh, some uh, uh, of the suggestions or actions that are being taken. I think we, we are saying even there, there's a lot that we need to discuss and see how best we can deal with this uh, issue. And uh, so generally, like I'm saying, it's our responsibility as parliament, calling yourselves uh, before us, Yes, we take note uh, when the DPCI was presenting, they were at work uh, elsewhere. We take note of that because the focus on dealing with issues of corruption, we would not want to be disruptive of that as well, but equally would want to get informed as we deal with oversight and also help you actually to understand what are the people uh, saying uh, in the ground. And uh, when I say saying, my sense is saying they are fed up with the issue of corruption. <laughs> the elections of uh, uh, November last year, they actually demonstrated that to everybody. So there's no question about it. So generally, if we're talking on their behalf, I'm sure they all want to see action. And when I say action, action, action. So, but I see one hand, I just thought I should uh, summarize and give you an indication that uh, uh, we, we, we appreciate the work that is being done, would want it to be consolidated, would want to defeat this issue of corruption. I see Honorable Kawa follow-ups and I see Honorable Matumba. Honorable Kawa. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> My follow-up is that, Chair, <clears throat> I was asking a question to the NDPP about them to putting more effort in the people who are, are already sentenced than to going forward and look at the municipality that there, there is a huge corruption, but there is no one who appearing in any court so that if they will do their work uh, thoroughly. Another issue, Chair, is me who was asking about them, Sugali who, who is not finished and bridges, who is not finished, I think is 10 or eight years now. Uh, I was one to put this issue to them in, on record that if there was no allegation about this, I'm putting the allegation to them, they must check this issue and they must investigate the contractor that, that was getting that job, why it was not finishing roads and bridges. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Matumba. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. I will start by, by Ox uh, to say, not that I'm defending those who are doing wrong, 
but uh, when they go to arrest, uh, they, it really affects family members and children of the people they arrest in front of uh, media, that thing of going with media. You know, <laughs> when, these peop- when, they, when they secure conviction and these people are, 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 are sentenced, it's better because the family now is now prepared. The, the, their minds and the psychological children and everyone is prepared. But when they arrest them like that in front of everyone and then spend uh, many years without uh, securing conviction, it's, it's, it's something else to say. When we go and arrest these people, let's leave uh, the cameras uh, at home. Now, they said we haven't had the allegations I, me too, I'm giving it to them today to say in, 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 in Makado municipality, Luitrehat uh, town pool, a contractor was given 1.1 1. Uh, 1 million. It started with 500 million, then another 600 million was added. But that pool, even today, if you are to go there, it's empty. I went there, I did oversight. It's empty, it's destroyed. There is nothing there. But the contractors got certification of completion. Of completion. It's pure uh, corruption uh, of untouchable uh, uh, contractor and uh, officials. Now, they said... Um, 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 this one is just to to assist them. They said, uh, in terms of pol- political office bearer, it's the mayor. No, that's not the situation. That's why, in the case of VBS, uh, councils were even suspending uh, C- CFOs. According to Municipal Financial Management Act, office bearer is not a mayor only. It's your speaker, it's mayor, and members of the executive committee or members of mayoral committee. So if you are to speak of corruption in the pool, you will have to follow the uh, member of executive committee in uh, that particular uh, department. Um, Also, a criminal conduct refer to either an act or an omission. So an omission by a political office bearers must translate into a criminal conduct, not only an action by management, but uh, you have covered it as uh, as well, Chair. Thank you. Uh, th- thanks, Chair. Am I to go to Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, 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 I'm coming back. Uh, simply, I think that uh, one what slipped my mind, although this I dotted this question, is the question of uh, one a progress report on the case of uh, Amatol, the 622 million on the VIP toilets. We know that. Uh, an initial arrest uh, happened and they appeared in court. What's the progress in court of that one? The second one it released to the, the RT case in Nelson Mandela. I don't, I didn't get those two cases. So how far are they uh, with them? Whether they have been concluded or they are still uh, on course? That's it. Thanks, uh, Honorable Kaza. You are the last now. No, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you will forgive me because uh, we are experiencing network issues, so we're in and out like that. That's why I came in late in terms of follow ups. I would like to get a sense, Chair, as to when are they uh, dealing with these cases that uh, uh, we have raised here? pertaining to Section 106 in Emalache. Section 106 in Dr. J.S. Murok. Time frames, Chair. Clear time frames, uh, clear turnaround uh, uh, period and, uh, and the completion. Because uh, I'm, I'm afraid, Chair, that some of the Stop, things- Stop, Chair, there is a music behind the speaker. There is a music behind the speaker. 
I don't know who's opening the I don't know who it's just here. I'm in the township here. I've asked them. Uh, to talk. How is it now? I'm in the township. Yes, here. yes. Oh, it's not, it's not quite quite. Now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, really, uh, I would like to, to, to get a sense uh, in terms of that and uh, and in terms of those municipalities in in, uh, in in the Western Cape as to when is that uh, happening, uh, Chepesi? Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Ronevald. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I think from my side, I firstly want to say thank you for all three departments for doing actually a great job and actually getting to a fact where we get convictions. But saying that, Chairperson, I think there's always more that we can do. The worst criminal we have in South Africa is those that steal from the public. So by saying that, Chairperson, I think that they still can be done more. But um, just for a closing remark, I want to thank them for what they're already doing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I think generally the follow-ups were pointing out to what was indicated indicated as cases that are not before you. And I think uh, trying to indicate what sources of such would be like this section 106 that uh, uh, Honorable Tazai is talking about and the specific municipality, this most, it's a Mosali or something. But uh, if there Mus are any Musuka, comments, Musuka, Musuka li no, it's fine. Uh, if there are any comments on those, I think, but uh, they are for noting generally. Yes. Uh, Chair, there's yeah. one uh, issue um, that that has been raised uh, by Honorable Kaba and Chaba. Um, the the issue of uh, you know we were I had indicated that we were going to appeal. Uh, certain matters if we thought that the the uh, sentences uh, didn't reflect the gravity of of the crimes themselves and I, if I, if I understood the gist of the question it was basically you know looking why are we dealing with the less serious offenses and not really focusing on the more serious offenses and um, if that was the correct my correct understanding then just to say that as as general Libya says we we look at the range of cases it's it's almost a we try to adopt as the general in terms of investigations a zero tolerance approach to to corruption and and you often need to and we need to look across the spectrum and and often you need to also deal with your lower level corruptions and officials so that you send a very very strong message that if you uh, attempted to be involved in these matters, there are serious consequences, even for the less serious matters. And often in order to build up a case to get to the more serious um, or uh, higher level criminals, so to speak, at the higher echelons of the ladder, you have to build a case sometimes by, by prosecuting lower level members in municipalities, etc. So, so this is Sometimes it's got to be part of your, your investigation and prosecution strategy. But I agree completely that those at the top, those that have really destroyed and almost brought our country to its knees, that without, as you correctly say, there's no bridges, there's all of these infrastructure issues, they must be held to account. And we certainly as law enforcement, and you know, there are some very, very uh, complex, uh, serious matters in the ACTT space those tend to take a bit longer to investigate, but I agree completely. As law enforcement, we really have to focus on these matters to make sure that those that have benefited most uh, from, from all of this corruption in our country are the ones that, that, that in fact are held to account and pay for, for their crimes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um... I, I don't see anyone, but like I'm saying, <clears throat> I think generally uh, these were specific areas and I'm sure we were also listening. Uh, uh, Lieutenant General, Idea, you want to say thank something? You. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And I think we have taken note of uh, the 
concerns raised by uh, the Honorable uh, Matumba. Uh, indeed, uh, we have directed all our uh, communicators not to act uh, in a way that uh, will be perceived as a Hollywood style. Uh, in fact, we went further to say that uh, if they need to record uh, the progress in terms of uh, securing the attendance or conducting the searches and the arrests, they can make use of their own uh, cameras, not to invite the media beforehand so that uh, we balance uh, that particular uh, opinion. So uh, there may in the past have happened that uh, some of the media pick it up before we proceed to the scene, but uh, we are managing that uh, honorable chairperson. And then uh, I think we are aware and we really do that, that uh, a crime is either committed by a way of uh, commission conduct or an omission failure to do what there was an obligation to do something. We really look at all of the elements when we do investigation of uh, crime. I will leave it that chairperson, but uh, we appreciate the comments that uh, has been made. Thank you very much, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members. Advocate Motivi. <clears throat> Uh, Honourable Chair, just, uh, just the last comment from my side, uh, probably just for the record. Um, uh, the, this, these matters that are mentioned by uh, uh, the Honourable Members around Section 106 and uh, Musuka Ligua, uh, although they are for noting, uh, just to avoid that on the next occasion we appear, we are asked what happened, we would really prefer that they, that they be reported to us. Uh, so either, either under the auspices of the committee or the individual members could send them to us and then we'll assess them in line with our le legislative mandate and then uh, report, report uh, accordingly. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, let me say on behalf of the committee, <clears throat> uh, we would like to thank you all for, for one, honoring the session. We have taken more than we were supposed to take, uh, but the information that we have gathered from this session, it will be processed properly by our administration and I'm sure it is going to be useful to us. I hope it would be as well useful to yourselves in terms of one prevention of some of this. Uh, we are all South Africans. Uh, we all have noted the damage that has been caused by all these activities that have been taking place here, but equally, would want to make sure that there's public education about what is going on here. Everybody understands. In the end, all these challenges, they rest on the hands of South Africans to deal with all these uh, uh, issues that we are. So I'm sure it would be better public representatives who would be conducting public education generally and contributing in how can we prevent uh, equally mobilized society on how can we support your activities in dealing with those who have already committed, preventing those who have got the potential and sending a message to deter everybody else who would want to destroy our country. So with those, I would say thank you very much. I know it's a Friday. And thank you to members of the Portfolio Committee for staying this long. And I'm sure out of this session would be a different committee. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Chair.